know which uh, cantrip I'm going to throw on there. Uh, how do I put that on? Uh, go to library and then spells. Yep, I got it under cleric spells. Yeah, and then you can search the name of it and just drag it over to your actions tab. Okay, cool. Oh, nice. Thanks. If you just drop it in the cantrip section, it'll automatically sort it for you, or anywhere in the spells section, it'll put it in the right place. Perfect. Got it. Thanks. Yep. Uh, ben and I still need to go later and go through all of your spells to make sure that the modifier is set correctly, especially now that it will have updated with your ASI. Uh, but we can do that after the fact. But anything you cast in the meantime, we'll just make sure that the that the modifier is is done, you know, properly. Okay. All right, so when you guys had left off, you had a, uh, had a guest with you who is actually still there, because we'll just say that it was um, during that time there, but everything is going smoothly. And uh, also during that time, though, in the tavern, uh, you guys did have your friends from your uh, local friendly factions come back in to get some drinks and uh, ask if you guys were interested in working for them a little bit more. So... None of these are too long, so do you guys care which order we go in? I think we'll probably be able to get all three of them done. Doesn't matter to me. Anything's good. Okay. Then, um, this one actually starts. Someone comes in to see Akasha. So. All right. Yep. So somebody from from uh, the Emerald Enclave comes in and asks for Akasha. So, they tell you that, um, that a, uh, let me see. Oh, fun, fun. There's a necromancer who's been stealing bones from the City of the Dead, which is the cemetery. You guys were there before when you met, uh, I think you guys met Istrid there, didn't you? Not long yeah, ago. Yeah, that was where, yeah, that was Istrid Horn, that's where she wanted us to meet her at. So yeah, the the cemetery in the city, and uh, apparently he's been digging up bones and animating them and uh, using them as skeletons. So they wanted to see if you guys could go to actually where you're going to be helping somebody else too. Uh, uh, Sir Ambrose Everdon is actually going to be going with you guys as well too uh, to go investigate the cemetery and see if you can find out about any you know, necromancers running around or uh, skeletons running around. So. Uh, is he the one that came to see us, or are we supposed to meet him somewhere? Yeah, he is actually going to meet you guys at the um, at the cemetery in the City of the Dead. So. Okay, will you put his name in there so I can mm -hmm. make sure I right? The contact tells you that Sir Ambrose has been... Uh, checking the cemetery, but he hasn't had too much luck on his own because it's pretty big, so he was hoping that he could cover one part of it and then have some other friends of the Enclave cover the other part. Hopefully spreading out will help a little bit trying to find a necromancer. Sure. Why not? And it says, uh, if you guys are able to uh, help out or find out anything out about it, then you'll get another Renown point and uh, 100 gold pieces each, which... Is not much for you guys now since you're all rich and riches. But... Money's money. So, so are we allowed to hurt this guy, or are we just supposed to find out information on him? <laughs> yeah, the guild the guild member contact says uh, we really don't care. Apparently, if um, somebody's out there using magic like this, they probably don't have the best of intent because we're guessing it's not for uh, using them for workers or something like that. So, do what you need to do. Sounds good to me. Do we get to keep the skeletons? <laughs> <laughs> the guild member says, uh, well, if uh, the family members might care about that, but I, I don't really care because I don't know anybody buried there, so I could care less. So. <laughs> they say, if, uh, of course, you're going to want to go at night, and then Sir Ambrose will meet you there. Um, if you guys are ready tonight, then uh, Sir Ambrose will meet you there at dusk. So. Okay. Works for me. All right, guys, um, anything else to pass the time before then? Fantasy Costco. Yeah, we can do okay. that. <laughs> yeah. I drop and, off, uh, I'm going to drop off another letter uh, with some, well, let's see. No, just, just a letter. Um, and then, 
and then go meet everybody at the Fantasy Costco. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, when you go to drop off your letter, you actually see that somebody has put something in your inbox, so you know you got some mail for yourself, and it's uh, from Club that you can get 10 CDs for a dollar. <laughs> Can I use a fake name so I can do it over and over again? Well, you, you do see uh, uh, when you're looking around the name or the, excuse me the mailbox next year. You can see the name on it, and uh, the initials are FQR, or I mean excuse, excuse me FQS, and it says a uh, Miss Felicity Q Stank. So I think she's been using <laughs> Columbia House too, and William Wallace is the one to the left. So. Did, did we ever use Columbia William House. Wallace for one of them? <laughs> yeah, we seriously did, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and we were so like amazed that they were so dumb they didn't realize that yeah, those services Wallace are fucking retarded person, dude. do you remember those Sako? <laughs> what's up so they used to be these things back in probably the at least through the 90s maybe even through the early 2000s they used to be these these commercials and then the, these like mailers that would come all the time where you could get uh, you know, ten CDs, and you'd pick from this giant catalog for for one penny or whatever. And then after oh, that, yeah. yeah, like if you if you stayed signed on, right. yeah, then it would be like this subscription thing where they would send you two every month, and it would be thirty months exactly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing is, uh, they never paid attention to who the name was. So Ben, not even kidding, Ben and I did that probably <laughs> ten times, where we would send in <laughs> bullshit fake names like William Wallace, and like made up stupid ass <laughs> names. <laughs> Uh, like historical names, whatever, and they would just keep sending them. Like, and then you know they would stop because nobody would ever pay because that person didn't exist. So <laughs> we just we probably got like fifty CDs for free out of those stupid. Oh, yeah. Nice. I used to do that with AOL discs and had free floppy discs forever. Yeah. 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 Because they never bothered to get a credit card to secure it or anything like that, so there was no way to actually make you pay if it wasn't a real person. So, yeah. You know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, G. So you were sending out another um, another letter. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it though. Okay. Um, I'll give you the notes for that. But uh... okay. Oh, I, okay. I just heard the sounds all of a sudden. <laughs> there was a seagull or something. Oh, it was a bird. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, all and right. Then so you mean somebody from Costco? Off. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, Sako, Kasha, anything else except for going to see Dell? I'll uh, mm -hmm. just check out Fantasy Costco and then uh, drop off some money in the safe. All right. Then, um, just say, uh, is it, your safe is actually, is it in your room or are you, are you at the bank, Sako? Because I know some of you guys are storing your money in your room, I can't remember. So. Yeah, I think it's my room. Okay. And we just say that you guys did that before you left then, while you were sitting there and while Akasha was talking to the Emerald Enclave Guild member or whatever. So, and then you guys head over to Fantasy Costco, and you guys' best buddy Del the Funky Homo Sapien is there. And he hears the little doorbell ring when you guys walk in, and he looks over and he says, Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Pretty good. How about you? Doing good. Doing good. He says, uh, "Can I interest you guys in anything?" Or yeah, I want that bow that you were showing me earlier. He said, "Good choice. Good choice. We actually still happen to have that." And hang on, I'm gonna bring up that list of stuff. Yeah, can you drop the list in again, G? I'm looking for it, but I, again, I'm no, scrolling back a bunch. Again. I don't see it. Again. I know I put that here somewhere. I thought it was just in the general channel, but I don't see it. I thought it was two. Where the hell did I say that at? I've scrolled way back and I don't see it. Like I'm back when we when we tried overtone for that day that everything was acting up. All right, I found it. Well, text based version. Hang on, I'll post it again. Cool. I found it. Okay. Up in the channel again. Yeah, it's right above the YouTube link for the Homer Simpson thing. Oh, okay. okay. I definitely scrolled past that. Oh, you know what? I was Reposted. looking. I was looking for a link. I wasn't looking for text. That's why. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Okay. 
that holy symbol, Sako, um, that would be a plus one modifier to all of your spells and everything as well. So you just got one, a plus one from your wisdom modifier going up, and that would be another plus one if you were to pick that up. I th yeah. thought it might be something like that. That's why I wanted to put it in there. So, yeah. cool. Maybe is that uh, just for wisdom, or is that anything? It's not wisdom. It's specifically for any spells, that you, any cleric spells that you use. Or religion checks, I think, also. But at least the spells, though. So basically, for your chances to hit, for your... Uh, uh, meaning, like, if, if they have a chance to resist rolling a save, it would give you it would increase your DC for those, uh, as well as your uh, healing would go up by one, all that stuff. Sweet. Nice. All right, and you wanted to pick up that uh, the bow for sure, uh, Akasha, babe? Yeah, definitely the bow. Okay. All right, uh, then go ahead and take the money out there, and then I will look and see what it is. So look under items, so uh, what? look for, um, t type in bow, G, and then it'll come out like a magic bow that's plus one or something, like we did with Sako Staff. Or... Yeah, um, if you just go, yeah, if you just go to items and then search longbow, because okay. you want specifically the longbow stats for range and everything too, you can drag that over, uh, find a you know plus one or something of that sort, and then we can modify the stats. There we go. Found one. Bring it up and drop it on your sheet there. Okay. And just drop it into the inventory. It'll add to the actions tab, right? Yep. Okay. How many gold is a platinum? Is it a hundred or a thousand? Ten. Uh, ten? I think, yeah, yeah, every every level is ten. Ten copper Ooh. is one silver, ten silver is one gold, ten gold is one platinum. So if I have ten platinum, that That's breaks down gold. to hundred gold. Okay. If you haven't spent anything, because I sent a bunch of money away, so if you haven't spent anything, I think we've earned, a, what, about 1300 or so? Because I have 1100 now, and I think I sent 300 away or 200 away, something like that. You sent a few out. Yeah. I have 10, it shows I have 10 platinum pieces, 975 gold, a couple silver, a couple copper, and then I put a couple of gold in this. Yeah, so it, hang on, 10 platinum, 975 gold? Yeah. All right, so... Uh, would be 1,075 gold. Plus whatever you have stored away or whatever. Ah, I thought platinum was uh, worth more than gold. It is. It's 10 gold. One platinum is 10 gold. Gotcha. But I definitely sent away 175 once and I think 50 another time. Um, so I basically I've, I've, I've spent money essentially, um, no, but not very much, just a little bit. And I still have 1,100. I still have 1,098 gold left after factoring platinum out. So it, I, it seems like you should have a little bit more. Uh, did you forget to add some somewhere? No, I just did the, the math up. It's the 1075 gold, and then I have 300 stored somewhere. Oh, and then okay. I spent money. Oh, yeah. The, three, the 300 stored is what it is, and that's just what you put, you know, in your in your safe at the uh, at the house. So you, that's where that's the difference right there. So you have sounds 1375, good. which that, that sounds right. Uh, quick question: Is my regular longbow supposed to be more than the new one? They did not add her. Um, modifiers to it. Yeah, because her new bow's plus six, regular one's plus eight, so it's not adding, like, whatever class modifiers or something like that. Uh, I think it's, it's the like archery fighting style. I think it's probably the archery okay. fighting style. Um, if you click on the magnifying glass to the right of the regular bow, mm -hmm. okay. does it show a bonus in the bottom? Proficiency. But the proficiency is lit up on the other one, too, right? The, the star. There's two. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't actually have the bonus there is why. Yeah, it, it, that's what I'm saying. Ah. The bonus is because of your archery fighting style, and it wouldn't automatically apply that, so you just need to manually put it in for the new bow. That's all. Cool. But if Got it's it. a plus one bow, then 
it would be one bonus, bonus to the attack right. and the damage roll anyway, so you would need to increase that by one. If it's if it's a plus one bow, it doesn't say in the in the thing from in the Discord. In this thing, the bonus says it's already two, so I need to move that to three or four. To well, it, is it already two because Becky just put it into two because of the yes. archer fighting style? Yeah. You, okay. So if it's a never mind, it, I didn't it, see you that. Okay. Is it is it a plus one bow? Yeah. Okay, then change the bonus to three, and then make sure the attack bonus has a, a plus one as well. Because does archery give you a plus a plus to the hit also, or just to the damage, Becky? Uh, I don't actually remember. Let's find out. Archer, it is uh, plus two bonus to attack rolls. Okay, it's actually not bonuses to damage; it's only to attack rolls. So you had it on the damage anyways, but unless that's coming from something else, it, it's only supposed to be on the attack roll. So check your things to see if there's something else from damage also. Like for mine, for example, my dueling fighting style wasn't added. I had to fix that this morning. Um, uh, but for archery, it's supposed to be a plus two bonus to attack rolls. So in that case, the attack bonus at the top part should say three. And the damage one in the bottom uh, would be one. Uh, let's see. For the attack, it says three. And then for the damage, it just says base. Damage should say... Hang on. I'll, I'll show you exactly how it should look. One second. Okay, so you see that there? That's how it should look, except the numbers for yours should be the, the top where it says bonus, where it says dex plus bonus for the attack section, that should be three. And then the damage section, it should be the dice listed. And then where it says uh, the uh, molt, molt time stat, do you see that? Yeah. Uh, that should still say dex, it should be just like that. And then the bonus should say one, unless you have something that's also adding extra damage to that too. Okay, there's actually nothing there, so. For the damage bonus. And there's nothing on the damage bonus for my other one either. Okay. Um, that... Huh. Why is that different for a bow? Can you... Is there anything clickable there? Where it says base, can you click base? Yeah, I just put it to dex. Okay, and then now does it have a box for bonus? It has the... Whoops. God dang it. There we go. It has the box for bonus, there's just nothing in it. Oh, yeah, no, just click it and type the number in. Okay. Yeah, so so for the bonus for the top one should say three now, and the bonus on the bottom one, you just click it and, and change it to one. But check your abilities, because you might have had something in there that was giving you a, a plus two to the damage to that as well. But that's it for like uh, basically the as it's supposed as a plus one would be would be right now a plus three to your attack on the top one and plus one to the damage on the bottom one, unless there's another ability that's changing that as well. So yeah, I don't think so. Sako, anything you want to pick up? Oh yeah, I'm gonna grab that uh, picture bible. Sweet. And uh, of course, Dell says thank you to you, Akasha. He says he hopes you uh get lots of good hunting with it, whether it be people or animals. And uh, Del also says, glad to see that there's a, a man of faith out there. Picture Bible for you, sir. Okay. Uh, I want to ask him if he could keep an eye out for a collar of ferocity for my uh, furry friend here. He says, uh, not exactly familiar with that. I mean, I know what a collar is, but I'm guessing this isn't a standard one. So uh, what what does it do? You know, what's special about it? Uh, oh, shit, I gotta look it up. Hang on. <laughs> I didn't write it. I never heard of it either. I'm looking it up now. What's that? Did you already actually tell Dell you were looking for a disguise kit, or did you yeah. just tell me? Not okay. A, not a disguise he already knows kit. About that. Not a, a special I specifically, one. Yeah, like a disguise kit is a mundane thing. It's basically just makeup and wigs and shit like that. I specifically yeah. want a magic item that I can use to cast disguise self on myself. Which there's, okay. there's a disguise, a hat, hat of disguise is what that's called. But any, I don't care if it's a hat or not. Like any, any variant is fine. Okay. And he says uh, he's still on the lookout for that for you, Rav. Cool. Okay. Now. I can't remember what it was. I'll have to go look at it. 
All right, so if you guys want to, is there anything else you guys wanted to check out? And I'll go find, uh, I got to remember, look at that link and find what the actual name of that picture Bible was. Can I change the name of it so I can find the item and add it to your inventory, Saka? So. Um, it's right. probably... I just pulled out the, uh, I just pulled out the 350, so uh, just let me know. Cool. We can we can do it manually in the meantime. Uh, you can just add a plus one item there for now. Uh, just remember, okay, Sako, when, when we're because we're gonna have to fix Sako's spells anyway. So when we're doing that, just remember to we'll be adding an extra one from his uh, holy symbol. The that spear G is crazy overpowered. So like I want I want to buy it, but I want to help you with the balance first because that that especially adding two poisons to that would be ri just insane. Like, I mean, okay. anything that you'd be able to to throw would uh, with one crit, I would be able to one shot it probably. Uh, okay. So, I mean, I'll, I'll just help you with the balance a little bit on that. Uh, so, you know, I'll come back and buy it later. All right. Then that's what we'll do. So we'll just say uh, Dell was checking it out and it had a imperfection, so he's getting it fixed up and buffed out and everything. But Sounds good. He says he'll have it ready soon. All right, guys. Uh, any other I do. shopping? Um, I'm, I need to pick up some extra supplies, uh, some more alcohol, uh, things like that. Just basically stuff to stock my uh, little alchemy den in the basement. Um, there isn't any set amount for that, but I'd probably buy, uh, let's call it 50 gold worth. Okay. And with that, that's just the kind of stuff. Um, do you need to add the actual, you got, I'm sure you can do it yourself, add the actual alchemy items? Um, I mean, it's. I'm just considering stuff. it like a basically a restocking of stuff I've already used, essentially. So uh, yeah. stuff to to replace the bomb that I used, some of the poisons that I've made, things like that. Uh, I mean, we we can get granular on it for sure. It actually would be quite a bit less than fifty, but we have plenty of money anyways, and I just figured you know make it fair. So. Yeah, well, we could just say you did that, or maybe you just left a nice tip or something too for the sure shopkeep or something. So I'm <coughs> that off so though. Cool. All right. And um, figure out something special. Is is uh, that bow being plus one in magic? Is that would that be good enough? Or like, should I add something else special to it? Or would that make Akasha overpowered as well too? Um, I like having fun with that stuff. I just don't want to make you guys too tough. You know. Yeah. So so enough, plus guess, one so. plus one is generally about right for this level anyways. Basically between levels. Right. So it's called tier one, which is basically levels one through five, one through six really. Uh, and then tier two is the next kind of five level gap and so on up through tier four, which is basically the, the end game. Uh, so tier one plus one weapons and stuff are fine. Um, you Because that's probably a pretty special bow anyways, like I, me personally anyways, and this is just how I like to do these and it's totally, you know, DM style. So totally up to you on how you like to do that. I don't usually like the kind of RPG feel, like video game feel of where you change out a weapon every couple of days. Like generally a little more realism would be you kind of this is a weapon that you like that you know the intricacies of this where if you're changing it every day you're gonna it won't, the balance won't feel quite right you have to get used to it again you gotta reacclimate and so on yeah so changing weapons constantly doesn't really feel quite as realistic to me so i would I, me personally as a, again as a dm style i would rather have uh weapons that kind of grow with the character something that they can have that they kind of use the whole time uh for example vulcan breaker for norok um, you know, that's that I, I basically made I, I like to if where possible make weapons that can kind of grow with the player a little bit So you might kind of unlock extra abilities later on uh, as you know, you get more familiar with it uh, As you know, you go up in level Maybe you learn a command word for a special ability that had you weren't aware of before that kind of stuff um, So I mean it, it, I can help you with some some balance stuff for that just to give her some extra cool features for it, too uh, But as far as stats are concerned plus one is fine yeah, I was just thinking uh, some other stuff to make it fun. But yeah, we'll do that. Because that's what I was thinking about with that screw tip spear, is that you would just get different tips that would do different stuff to make you, you know, stronger or whatever as you go along. So probably do something like, um, uh, well, like maybe different arrows or something in a few levels. Like a, and like a dragoon Hawkeye. Yeah. Yeah, like, like well, the so with specifically with her, the same thing for the spear would be cool too. Um, uh, that, that, I like that idea. That's fun. Um, but for for Becky's stuff, like the it's hard to not affect balance when you add cool stuff. Uh, but at the same time, the cool stuff is what makes the game fun, and that's really the yeah. primary goal. So it balance is less important than everybody having fun. So um, there, there's there's cool things you can do that may you know won't make everything completely out of balance and harder for you to make combat encounters that are still challenging and fun, uh, but still have cool features. Uh, you know, things like extra proficiencies with, uh, you know, if she's stealthing in the dark, things like that. Uh, and any any kind of a kind of a smaller, those are called ribbon features generally. Um, they can, one, help RP situations, which is 
something that that a lot of DMs like ignore and, and don't really get to, to play as much, um, but also can do things that are still really cool but don't completely throw all your combat out of whack. But I can I can help you with that afterwards. Yeah. I, right, well, I mean, uh, it took me Del- a long time to get it down. I totally gave you guys way too many toys and <laughs> and battles as you guys remember. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so Dell says that uh he's heard of uh sometimes that there's a uh, different kind of arrows out there that are not your standard arrows that might do a little bit of uh, fun tricks or whatever that are uh, known to go with a bow like this. But he hasn't seen any yet. So he says check back later. He's going to keep an eye out for some. See if he can help you out. So. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, any other shopping? Because you took care of your alchemy supplies and stuff, Holmes. And yeah. uh, I'm assuming you ran them back to the to the bar and put them in your lab and everything. Yep, all set. All right, guys. So we will say that you pass the time till it starts to get close. To, uh, you start walking up to uh, you know the city of the dead when it gets close to dusk, and you guys actually do see. Is there? All right, there's not a not a picture of them, but you guys do see, um, okay, uh, yeah, you guys see a guy, uh, dressed in, um, nice, uh, armor, like plate armor and everything standing near one of the, a big monolith over there in the, um, uh, uh, City of the Dead, so, and he looks over and sees three people coming, so he kind of, you know, catches your guys' gaze and waves a little bit, because, just in case you're the, the three that he was waiting for, so, you guys gonna head that way? Yeah. Okay. You guys walk up and he says, uh, "Hi, um, uh, one of you, Akasha, from the from the guild." That's me. He says, huh, <laughs> "Interesting name, huh?" All right. Well, I, I usually I'd assume a prettier face with a, a name like Akasha, but nice to meet you. I'm wounded. And he sticks his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say, is this guy? He's like a, uh, he's a you know like a knight, sir, whatever. So he's probably pretty, pretty uh, stuck up and doesn't really get jokes. So he actually took you seriously at first. And he says, oh, "All right, good one." And he says, "I'm guessing the lady is Akasha." And he sticks his Wrong hand again. out. <laughs> <laughs> he looks up and says, "A, a, a, a talking yak. I've never seen a, a talking yak before. Nice to meet you." Is a all right, Sir, Sir Ambrose Everdon is the name. Uh, again, uh, Emerald on Clave asked me to come investigate a wrong again a out here. So, wrong about his own name. He says, Man, they lied to me. Then he's like, No, but um, <laughs> so he says he's been looking for a necromancer out here, and he says that uh, he will cover the north half just, just you know throughout the night uh, of the cemetery and look around if you guys want to cover the southern half and see if you guys can see any goings on. Sounds um, good to me. Okay. All right, guys. So, one of you guys, I don't care which one, but somebody roll a d20 for me. Becky, since it's her game? Yeah, actually, it's a good idea. Yeah, since it's your... Oh, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, yeah, that's what all right, so you guys are searching through the night, and it actually, you know, takes a while. You guys are getting pretty bored, you know, by the time, because you got there, it's it's fall, so it's probably getting dark at, you know, what would be about six or seven or so, regular time, which again, I can't remember the name. I don't know if the hours are the same. I know the days are different on the calendar, but so, you know, about six or seven, it's, it's getting dusk when you guys meet there, so it's probably about, you know, midnight, one o'clock, you guess been running around for a few hours and you guys actually do hear some um, digging actually what sounds like digging coming from uh, behind a couple of graves not far from you and hold on to your map Incoming. Okay. Uh, quick question: Can I get the longbow off of my uh, my actions tab? 
just my regular longbow. Uh, you mean delete it yeah. off? Yeah, because like I still have it in my inventory, and I took it off of Warn, but it's not. Yeah, if you, it's kind of annoying actually. If you delete it out of one, it'll it'll still be it'll it'll still be there basically. So you pretty much have to delete it from the actions tab, and then it'll just reappear later on anyway. Um, if you if you delete it, so go go to your inventory tab and then delete the longbow. Your regular one, obviously, not the new one. Yeah. And then add an item and just call it just basic. Well, do you remember how to add in just a made up item? Like how to manually add to something? Uh, no. So click on the bottom line, the last item in your inventory, and hit enter. And it'll give you a blank line. And just name it longbow. And then in the second section, you can you know move it to whatever section you want it to be in. Uh, but if you do it that way, then it won't it won't uh, categorize it as a real weapon. And now it should be disappeared off of your actions tab. Yay! Thank you. Yep. And that way you still remember that you have it because it's still called the same thing, but it's not actually a longbow as far as Fantasy Grounds thinks. All right, map. I can see it actually on the recordings tab uh, or on my recording section. I did, I can't see it completely on my side, so I'll, I'll, I'll get that fixed eventually. But I mean, I, I can see enough from the other, from the recording tab. <clears throat> All right, so you guys hear some digging and you look over and see some bony hands and bodies popping out of the ground. Hang on one second here. And can you guys roll initiative for me, please? Is the, so there wasn't somebody digging like with a shovel, they're digging from underneath is what we were hearing? So far, what you just see, like you just heard dirt moving, and uh, and you know dirt moving, and then now you hear bones moving around a little bit, and there's some of them coming out of the ground, and some that are already out of the ground. Right. So, bone storm. Wasn't that your bone dancer, G? Bone storm. That's right. I don't right. remember. Sako, do you have turn undead types things? Uh, not yet. Let me double check. As a grave pack, I bet you get some cool undead type features eventually. Yeah. Uh, channel divinity, you got at level 2, but I don't remember what the channel divinity for grave is specifically. Divine domain feature, it says. Change some music over here. Uh, turn it up a little, well, potentially, with the, depending on what the sound is. That one's really quiet. Okay. All right. Uh, Path of the Grave, Sako. So as an action, you choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you, uh, cursing it until the end of your next turn. Uh, the next time you or an ally of yours hits this cursed creature with an attack, the creature has vulnerability to all of that attack's damage, and then the curse ends. Basically, you can double the damage uh, anytime you use that. Uh, which is as an action, you pointed something, uh, it will take double damage from the next hit. Where did you see that? Uh, Channel Divinity Path of Path to the Grave is what it's called. You got it at second level. Okay, guys. I don't see that. AFK, one second, guys. I'll be right back. Um, it's the it's your Channel Divinity. Do you see Channel Divinity anywhere? On your no. skill, uh, go to your abilities tab. Okay. Do you see yeah, anything see on top? Channel, channel divinity. Features. Uh, click on channel mm -hmm. divinity, and it should it should say path to the grave in there. Because that's a pretty fucking badass ability. Basically, you can make a, a target take double damage from the next hit that it that it takes. Yeah, see, turn undead as well. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure everybody gets turned undead automatically. So. It looks like there's things that we need to fix on your sheet that just aren't there yet. So, because uh, like that's there in your uh, abilities tab, but it's not in your actions tab. So, like it, uh, you know what? I bet there's got to be a way to have the math automatically do it. So I'll I'll make sure that it gets fixed. But just don't forget that you have that ability in the meantime. Yeah, I don't see it here. I'm I'm looking under my channel divinity. There's it talks about a whole bunch of stuff, but I don't see what you're talking. Here, I'll drop it in uh, Discord for you. Click that link, and then scroll down to just below Eyes of the Grave. You'll see Channel Divinity Path Through the Grave.
your circle of mortality will be useful too. Um, first level, you gain the ability to manipulate line between life and death. When you would normally roll dice uh, to restore hit points with a creature that is zero, basically if you're resur or, uh, bringing somebody up from unconsciousness, you automatically roll the max die. So you don't even have to roll. Well, yeah, I don't see any of this on my character sheet. Yeah, it's it's all in your abilities tab. They're just extra things. Like that one is isn't something that would really go on your actions tab, but just as reminders, uh, when I go over it with Ben, I'll put I'll I'll just put all of those extra things on your actions tab. It'll probably end up being a little bit confusing because you'll end up with a ton of different things on there that you're not going to use very often. But just try to remember that you have them, and when the opportunities come up, you know that you can use those. Uh, but you do also have Eyes of the Grave. The reason that I was mentioning that is the second one under Circle of Mortality. Uh, this is something that you would have just popped off for you. It's at first level, you gain the ability to occasionally sense the presence of undead, whose existence is an insult to the natural cycle of life. As an action, you can open your awareness to magically detect undead. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of undead within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and isn't protected from divination. Uh, sense doesn't tell you about the creature's capability or identity. And you can use it five times now. I guess I'm back whenever you're that ready. Was eyes of the Grave, right? Yeah, that one's Eyes of the Grave, and then Path of the Grave is right after that. So basically, uh, once... Hang on, it's the number of times you can use Channel Divinity per day, uh, which for you right now, I don't see it listed how many times. Let me find it real quick. Um, so basically, you can use your turn undead or that forced, uh, forced double damage thing. Uh, and you can use it once, until 6th level, you can use it once between rests, so once per day. So just remember you have that, we'll just do it manually, and then I'll help Ben get it fixed on your sheet for you. Gotcha. What was it called for that uh, double damage thing? It's called Path to the Grave. Path to the Grave, got it. You have that and Turn Undead, and you can use either one of those once per day until level 6, and you'll get twice per day. Cool. All right, but well, ready when you guys are. All right, guys. And all right. And everybody did roll initiative, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Guess he just had a good one. So let's see what this is. Okay. Thirty. And so you guys see now six different animated skeletons moving up over here towards you well one of them is moving up towards you so he actually sees Eldor over there and he is going to come over and try to hit you because he has a short sword in his hand and then they have uh, little short bows strung over there well non-existent backs I guess you can say they're back bones so I want to say something just real quick I know, I've been talking too much, but I want to say something just real quick. So this is one of those dumb things that nobody ever thinks about when they're when they're writing their their pre-written adventures. These skeletons were apparently buried with swords and short bows. Why would you yeah. bury a family member with a sword and a short bow? You see what I'm saying? Because they just dug their waves out of the grave, and with weapons. And who does that? Why would you bury your family members in a cemetery with those? It's not like they died on a battlefield somewhere and still had their weapons. Like it's just it's one of those dumb things. Like, uh, for example, the other day when we were playing uh, a couple weeks back with the horse that had the uh, the saddlebag still on, you don't leave a horse like yeah. that's that's cruel. Why would you do that? Why would you have him weighed down with like eight hundred pounds of, of uh, silver bars or whatever? Remember, for no good reason. It was dumb. These were Al Qaeda yep. graves. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say they just buried them with weapons in case, you know, they just randomly get animated and need to kill innocent, you know, passerbys going <laughs> through the, the graveyard. So, like poor Elder. Uh, yep, so apparently, yeah, they just randomly have those on them, so he sees the giant uh, Zebu and he's going to try to attack you. And he hits. And so he swings his sword at you. Nice little gash on you, but you're still alive. Uh, it's your turn, babe. Do all my uh, bonuses take into effect for that hit? If I have any armor bonuses or anything? Uh, that is just your AC, Socko. So go to your main tab. What is your AC listed as? In the shield in the middle. 18. Yeah, you're fine. That's that's what it would be then. That's actually okay. that's okay. really high, actually. That's good, so... 
Okay, the skeleton rolled a 20, so total with this <clears> modifier, <throat> so. Must be working. Uh, these don't actually count for favorite enemy, do they? They'd be counted, the type would be undead, not humanoid. Yeah, whatever they were before doesn't count. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. That's not And it hits. Really? Yeah. It did. You got a 13. That's a plus 9 on there, so. Which I guess is their AC must not be great, but still. <laughs> their HPs aren't great either. No. <laughs> Too much HP either. Uh huh. So that arrow goes flying through and hits the skull and actually detaches the skull from the rest of the body. It goes flying off and actually kind of lands, uh, sticks into that um, stone casket behind him over there. So that one is toast number one. Any bonuses, babes? Well, I was going to do Hunter's Mark, but if they're that low, no. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, so keep in mind, too, though, that um, because the HPs roll randomly for all of these, he, that guy could have just got a really bad roll. He could have rolled ones for his HPs. The others could be potentially quite a bit higher. Yeah, some of them are a little bit better. That guy must have just been really low. But, again, I think these guys are more about a quantity instead of quality. So, it is your turn, Sako. All right, I want to take a side step to the left and uh, flank that skeleton and jab him in the side with the quarterstaff. Okay. And... Did you not have him targeted? Either way, that would have hit anyway, though. Yeah, so 16, just go ahead and roll so. the damage on him. Yeah, that would have hit for sure. <clears throat> so. so you whack him across the... <laughs> yep. I was going to say you whack him across the top of the head. And his skull just bashes in. You know, obviously not the... Must be a pretty old body because the skull just kind of caves in and it falls down to the ground. Um, well, I would say lifeless, but, you know, it's already lifeless. So, even more lifeless. I'll look down at the Any corpse and say, you? drink more milk. <laughs> <laughs> Is this He's a Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of a... Your luggage kind of a, kind of a one-liner? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit cow-based. That's good. That is cow base. That works for you. And because you're a cow, so you can leave him some milk if you want to. That is a multi-level pun. Because he's bones, you know, calcium. Yep. That's what that I thought he was going shit. with. I didn't. I wasn't thinking the milk yep. of a cow thing. Any bonus action, Sako? I'm good for now. Okay. Next is Yuji. Uh, let's see. I can't see the terrain, but actually, at least on the recordings map, it looks like it's pretty clear, except for some gravestones in the way, so I'll just take a straight shot at this guy here. Okay. That should be 25. And I will give this guy a good uh, whack with the butt end of the spear. Natural 20. Oh, yeah. Of course that is. So. Um, no... I don't know damage adds or anything because he's not humanoid, so. Okay. And Four, nothing special on the table, but kicked his ass, though. All right, if he's still... Ah, shit. I don't want to waste a full one on him, but I don't want to get in the middle of the... Ah. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, hit him with the, with the spear end as well. Okay. Because that you can tell that hit definitely rattled him a bit. Again, he's lifeless already, but it's definitely... Looking worse for the wear, so. Oh, and now, yep. he, now he's doubly lifeless. <sighs> yep. Uh, the music stopped, G. You want to hit play on the scene oh. again? Yeah. Uh, since he's since he <sighs> went unconscious, I stalled five feet on the back of five feet. <clears throat> That's it for my turn. Okay. Uh, I, I free action though, as I was heading over there to go whack that skeleton. Um, let them know that don't forget though, we probably still have a, a necromancer to deal with as well, so we may end up with more of these. Oh, speaking of, <laughs> you guys here after you smash up that skeleton and you uh, you look over, G, you actually see a guy. He was walking from you know from the south down there. And he walks up, and he looks at you guys, he's like, what the hell? Did, wow, it's actually happening. And he's looking over at you guys. And he says, uh, wow, who are you guys, and where'd these skeletons come from? 
The cautious show. <clears throat> Where is he at? He's here. He actually gets... Well, he doesn't want to get too close, but he looks a little bit closer. He's like, oh, wait a minute. I know who you guys are. Hey, you guys own that tavern. You guys remember me? My name's Stuart. I'm from the Ghost Facers. Yeah. See? They actually are real. This is exciting. Although scary, too. So. Are you the one that's bringing these assholes alive? <laughs> he says, bring them alive? I've never even actually... Uh, wait. Um, no, I've, I've seen a lot of ghosts before. Lots, lots of ghosts and skeletons before, but... Uh, no, I, I don't even know how to do that. I, I don't know any magic. Can I do an inside check, see if I believe? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll an inside check, please. Yeah, that's a, definitely a good roll. Uh, he seems definitely... You're assuming he's telling the truth. You get a really good feeling that he is, because he looks a combination of, like amazed but also look really scared at the same time and he doesn't seem to have any kind of malicious intent he just looks like a kid basically like watching a horror movie kind of so no you don't think that he did and he caused any of this so all right well <clears throat> you might want to stay out of this because you'll probably get hurt he says oh this is so exciting so exciting he's kind of just like dancing back and forth but like cowering down a little bit so he just he waits over there so Number six, is that one still alive? No, that one's dead. So, it is five. He's still alive. This one. Number five is alive. <laughs> J5 is alive. He sees uh, Rob over there, so he's going to pull out the very oddly placed short bow that he has on him. And, and arrows, too. Not really sure where he's storing his arrows at, but he is going to try to shoot Rob with his short bow. And misses. Not a very good shot, apparently. And Stubert down there is just excited with with, with joy. So, ghost turn. Alrighty. Um, yeah, why not? We're gonna run down this way, and he's gonna pounce on this guy. Hopefully. Okay. And. Skeleton succeeds, so he's not knocked over, but he still gets to get bit, right? Uh, yeah. So... And it hits. There, and... Nice. Oh, wow, Ghost is tiny. Alright, he's just gonna move around to this side. Is that way he's okay. kinda in between the skeleton and idiot over there that won't leave <laughs> and this one sees Stubert over there but he also sees the cat so he looks over back at Stubert and he starts running after him <laughs> so I told him to run <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll just roll it because he's actually not even on the combat tracker but still he's dumb enough to stand there so Number nine is going to use a sword. Let's see if he can hit dumbass steward over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's wings and Stubert's too fucking dumb to, you know, he's stayed too close. So the skeleton goes over and swings at him and hits. And okay, that's not too terrible, but like gets a nice little gash on his shoulder and his arm down his chest a little bit. You know, superficial, not going to go to his heart or anything, but uh, <laughs> definitely hurt him. So you guys hear Stuber yell out loud. He's like, ah, no. And he is actually like crying tears now, sitting there holding him, holding that little slash on his chest and bawling like a baby. And this one. Yeah, dummy. <laughs> that's what he gets for fucking being dumb. This one sees the cat over there and he's like gonna go over and see if he can play with the kitty uh oh he hits yeah it's fine not too if bad if they kill ghost yep, so ghost come back as a skeleton <laughs> yeah he's already dead he's ghost so that's true <laughs> So the skeleton gets a decent little slash on Ghost, but not too bad, though, because he moves out of the way and dodges the, the brunt of the attack there. So, um, 
looks like. You're out. Okay. <sighs> that one is not in action anymore. It's your turn, babe. Alright. Alright. Go with. No, you know what? He didn't run, so I'm going to hit this one. It's his own fault for not running. Hits. Nice shot. Send out an arrow and hit number five with a nice little hit there, and he. Let me see. Yeah, he's looking like he's not going to be living again for too much longer. He's wobbly and not moving too well now. So, any bonuses? Not yet. Okay. <sighs> Another one that's already done. Eldor, it's your turn, sir. All right, we're going to move down a little bit and uh, hit a skeleton here. 30, 30 is the movement, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, so that's 25 this way, and I'm gonna actually go yeah. diagonal and go for skeleton number two. Uh, quarter okay. staff. Hang on, you have three targeted still too, so untarget three. There you go. Okay, number two targeted. And it misses. If Ooh. you still have uh, the quarterstaff, if you're using it one-headed, if you still have that knife on you, you can still do a bonus action since you're, it's only melee, but you can do a bonus action with your dagger or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, with the dagger, I'm actually going to switch it over to five, if that works. Okay. And try and uh, stab the bony man in the non-flesh. <laughs> and it hits. He got toasted too. You hit a non-existent artery and it non-existent bleeds out and falls over. That one is toast. Sweet. Next is rough. Two skeletons left. Uh, not that I particularly have any concern for, for Stubert here, but I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll run in and I'll, I'll sweep the butt end of the spear around to try to knock over skeleton nine here. Okay, you're gonna try a trip. No, not a not an actual trip, just uh just you know, hitting okay. him with the with martial strike. For a twenty five. And it connects. Bam. Um There you go. Yeah. Well Yeah, I guess I'll still use the, the main hit to, to hopefully finish him off. Okay. Another natural twenty. Well that's kinda of waste. Right. I can't imagine he has much <laughs> much HP's left. <laughs> And it knocks. I'll keep and, this uh, one. Go ahead. I was just going to say the effect is something that wouldn't really matter, but it, you would have cut his leg off at the knee, so you just would have knocked off the little calf bones and everything, and then he would have... Yeah, he would have fell prone and then got up, and when he was up, he would have had half speed for the rest of his existence, but you killed him anyway, so... All right. Then I'm just like to... Off, I guess, <laughs> I'll turn to face this one, and I'll, I'll uh, just take a swig of, of one of the bottles I bought, and that'll be it for my turn. Sweet. Uh, skeleton 2 is pretty, pardon the pun, but he's pretty boned because he's flanked on three sides now. Oh, yeah, he is. So, ghost is if ghost attacks, babe, he will get... Well, nobody's plus directly across, one, but plus one. Yeah, though. yeah, it would still be plus but one. But there's yeah. three of you guys. Okay, yeah. but yeah, so plus one. Alright, well... I tried to keep the rules as simple as possible for it. I mean, it could yeah. have been something like add one for every person that's around it, but then it gets more and more complicated. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that. Um. So, yeah, he's done. <laughs> Music stopped again, Jake. That actually is kind of funny, so... It says uh, the effect is that all allies fall prone and are incapacitated for one round. But that doesn't really make sense unless like a giant earthquake happened. I'm just going <laughs> to randomly assume a giant earthquake doesn't happen right now. So you guys are not prone. But Fucking jerk that's ghost. Funny, 
Yeah. Nice try, Ghost. Okay, that one is no longer moving around either, so it's this one's turn. We hit and... play on that sound loop, G. Oh! I did, but it, I don't... Did it not come back on? Let me try a different one. Still nothing there. Uh, that one's oh, playing. It's just really quiet. Yeah. Can you still hear it? I turned it down a little bit. Is that... uh, it's there now. Okay. Sweet. All right. And it is number two's turn. And, you know, since he's a uh, skeleton and doesn't really have much of a brain, he's just going to keep doing what he was doing and try to beat up poor Ghosty. And it's... Not much. Ghost is just too tough. Gets another hit on him, but nothing serious. And it is... Your happened. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, I'm gonna have to move. Uh, Eldor's kind of blocking your view. Fifteen... Shit. Mm -hmm. Alright. 20, 25, 30? Yeah, I can reach him there. There you go. Okay. Hopefully I can do better than ghosts. <laughs> Yay. And it hits. And knocks him down too. <sighs> hits him in the ribs and knocks off a bunch of his ribs and he just falls over as to the ground again, like lifeless yet again. So, and that is it for the action. And so you guys hear Stubert still crying, but he kind of speaks up over his, you know, sobbing, choking sounds, and uh, says, "Wow, wow, you guys are tough. Thanks for help there. Appreciate it." He's looking at you, rough. You saved me. Appreciate it. I mean. No, we didn't. We were taking care of these. You just happened to walk by. I, I couldn't care less about you. He says, yeah, I know. We're, we're actually best friends, though. I know that. You, you would want me to hang out with you guys ever since you saw me in the tavern, so I understand. <laughs> it's cool. I, I know us guys can't really, you know, express our feelings and everything, but I know we're best, you know, best friends now, so. He's like, and I still can't believe that they actually, well, no, wait a minute. I do believe it. I've seen it. I've seen so many skeletons before. I've seen lots of them, but, you know. These ones look a little like uh, different, so I, I think I might want to collect a sample. And he comes over and grabs a couple of bones off of that skeleton there and puts them in his bag. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna shout I'm gonna shout out uh, through the cemetery. Just necromancer, necromancer. This guy, <laughs> he's volunteering. He he, he wants to be dead. <laughs> he says, "Who? He'd make what? a real good slave." What? what? Uh, uh. <laughs> and he fucking runs off. You guys don't see him anymore. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, right. And, all right, so you got all them knocked out, and when you guys looked, you didn't see, you guys didn't see anything else. When you guys came up, you just saw the skeletons coming up out of the ground, so. Okay, can Ghost start sniffing around and see if he smells anything other than the skeletons, like anything else that's around? Um, since he's using his nose... With advantage, uh, perception check, please. While Ghost is sniffing around, I'll ask Eldor. Like, is there, do we need to do anything with these guys to keep them from coming back? Like, is there some grave right that, that, that uh, you know, you can do to keep them from coming back up again? Uh, I think, let me double check here. I'm reading through Divinity now. I don't know if you... Well, you don't actually have Destroy Undead until level 5, so I don't know if you actually have. I was just... It was more of an RP thing. Yeah, not yet, yeah. I know it exists, <laughs> but uh, I don't know of it yet. Okay, and um, obviously with that really good roll, Ghost notices... He starts moving around this way, goes over the body, and... Oh, wrong one starts going over this way 
and he's kind of looking back at you like he's kind of sniffing the ground and looking around but he kind of looks back at you and he's just wagging his tail like it's kind of slow not real fast like he doesn't look overly excited but he's sniffing something that goes that way so you're assuming that he smelled something going that way yeah i'm gonna follow him. to the east follow, follow lassie cat he smells corpses <laughs> Okay, and when you guys when you guys look, you do see it. You know, it looked like somebody had walked that way because you see some footprints and stuff that way, but you don't see anything in the distance. So when you guys look out, as far as you can see, you don't see anything anymore. So you're assuming that he or she did go that way because go smell something that way, but it's a relatively faint smell now, and um, you guys don't see anything. So. I mean, you can keep going that way if you want to, but he doesn't look too entertained, so assuming that it probably raised those skeletons up and instantly just started going that way. So, whatever did it, you'd assume that necromancer. Is there anything over that way, or is it, like, back into the city? He's It's just going off into, like, a little bit of some trees and stuff that are over there that are just part of the cemetery going off that way and then back off another path that leads back into the city, so... I don't know, what do you guys think? Check it out. We can go through it at least and then make our way back north, maybe check in with Ambrose and see if he saw anything. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Can you guys, while well, you guys are going around to go meet, so you guys are going to look as you're going to meet Ambrose, walk around and see if you can see anything else and then... Yeah, you know, see, if, to... see if Ghost picks up any other clues or something. Okay, um, then whoever wants to kind of look around while you guys are doing it, uh, go ahead and give perception checks, please. Okay. Want me to roll on right. ghost? Or just go with the one he had before? No, you can just go with the one that he had before, because he was the one that noticed, you know, the, the sand going that way, because he got such a good roll before anyway. So you guys uh, look around and you just see that the path, the footprints go over to a path where it starts to get back to street that's you know made of cobblestone or whatever it is, the actual streets. So uh, back to the, the city area, not the little cemetery that has a little parkland and, and the grass and everything. Well, kind of muddy because it's been raining a little bit. So the footprints just go that way and then you see like a couple of, a little bit of dirt on the first few steps going back into that way uh, and then just going off into down the street and you know and, and back into the city so it seems like a trail that's not really can be you know followed for the most part because it's just going to lead you right back into the city where everybody is so okay. back to Ambrose okay all right so you guys go back and he's uh searching around the top you, you see him you know kind of looking behind some graves and stuff and trying to look around and see if he can hear anything or see anything, although he's kind of loud, obviously walking around with that armor and everything. And uh, he sees you guys coming. He's like, oh, hey, guys, uh, did you find anything? It's been a long night so far. Just some skeletons. No necromancer, though. We did see a little dipshit that uh, you know goes out at night with night vision goggles and really takes really awful video of doors closing and quiet noises. He tries to make a TV show out of it. <laughs> He says, okay, well, that's both kind of odd. I mean, obviously, we were out here for undead being reanimated, so skeletons are kind of odd, but there was a, a living person running around out here at this time of night? Yeah, just one of those dumbass ghost hunter types. Ghost hunter? Oh, shit, do you mean those idiots? They hand you that stupid card, f f ghost facers? Did you say one yep. of those fucking morons? That's them. Yeah, these guys are idiots. They have no idea... He almost got they, they, they think, that, yeah. Well, I, I guess it wouldn't have been too bad if he did get a, uh, did get killed. But uh, either way, I'm I guess I'm glad he made it. So, all right. And so, no necromancer. Okay, but there is something obviously going on. So we're going to keep investigating this. Uh, I definitely want to thank you guys for helping us out here, and um, and uh, I will make sure that I report to the enclave. Oh, and um, don't forget to you know go by and, and grab your reward. 
when you guys get a chance, and of course Akasha, they're going to remember what you did here. They always uh, appreciate the help, so I'm sure you'll earn even more renown with the guild. So when he says, I'm just going to keep looking around here in case I can find that necromancer. I don't know, he might be stupid enough to come back later. So thanks for the help, guys. Yep, yep. So we'll just hand wave the part where you guys go, I, well, I'm assuming, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> and when it's not the middle of the night to go collect your guys' money. So you guys can add another 100 gold pieces back to your inventories if you wish. Mm -hmm. And now you have two renowned points with the Emerald Enclave, Akasha. So they're mm -hmm. definitely starting to take notice of you and your deeds, which, I mean, they already knew about you guys before. That's why they contacted you, but they're definitely appreciating your help. here carry on to what's next and we will just say to make it easy and kind of make more sense i guess at least that during the last few days and stuff when you guys were hiding history and all that that uh that uh the uh, other guild members for their contacts from the other guild members had come to find you guys Our guy from the Hall of Justice. Alright, I cannot find that stupid collar that I found online before. I have no idea where I found it. I tried looking for it. I didn't find anything called the uh, Collar of Ferocity. There was, there was a few others, like a, similar collars, but I didn't see one called Ferocity. So. Yeah, it was Do just you remember what it did? Uh, it was supposed to be something similar to, like, a Rage. Type thing like raging does you were for barbarians. Tell me about it, but I can't remember what you said. Yeah. yeah, I can I can help you a homebrew one. No big deal, if that's what you're looking okay. for. Yeah, it was just supposed to be something similar to like what a rage does. I think it like added one to AC or something mm -hmm. like that. Not full resistance, but just boosts boosts his AC, and like a flat damage add or something. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we could put something like that together. Okay, guys, um, so you guys can either go uh, visit, visit to the Order of the Gauntlet and see, and you know, or do, do that one, because obviously the, the guild member told you about that, or you can do the Harpers for Rob's mission, which they, again, already told you about that too, so we will just, whichever one you guys want to do first, we will go towards, and we'll say it's the next day, of course, because you're not just going to run off in the middle of the night and do it again, so. Uh, go ahead and Don't apply a long rest so that Eldor, gets, Eldor and yeah. Ghost gets their HPs back. And let's go do the gauntlet one for Sako. That works. There we go. Alright, so you guys head up to the Order of the Gauntlet. We guys have met Sovereign before and everything. Oh, and um, while you guys are actually here, uh, Sako, can you give me a... Actually, all three of you guys, uh, can you give me a memory check? And then, Sako, go ahead and with advantage, please. Good, good. Okay. Luckily, the advantage helped there with Sako. Would have been... Uh, the Ross probably would have been enough anyway, because it's not too hard to remember, but you guys... Hang on, let me change that music. You guys do remember uh, when you were back here at the Order of the Gauntlet that they um, do have uh, uh, that Savra breeds griffins, and so they have access to griffins, which could, uh, if you sweet talk them enough, they might let you use one, which would help you guys search the city for that uh, nimble right easier when you guys are ready to get back to the main quest. So, so Sako does remember that they have griffins here, and so he thinks, well, you know, having to go back and look for, when you guys are ready to go look for the nimble right, that it might help instead of having to walk the streets. So, of course, you're not sure Save if you're to let you have one, but... Oh, we, we could hotwire a griffin. That can be done. <laughs> there you go. It's the red wire and the blue wire. So. It's the flying and the furious. <laughs> okay, guys. 
I guess I could have shared this before. And the other one, too, here is information on the quest here. Uh, you guys, I have uh, been told, the uh, or the gauntlet is telling you guys, and talking to Sako and telling you guys that there's a, a thief back in town called the Black Viper that they thought was dead. You know, your notorious thief here in Waterdeep, but it seems like they're back because there's been some robberies in noble houses and the noble estates uh, that definitely match the MO of the Black Viper. And they want to know if you guys can investigate it a bit. And they also did know uh, that The uh, publisher of a local paper called the Waterdeep Wazoo is, uh, has information. He supposedly had saw something uh, or know something about the Black Viper. Uh, and his name is Gaxley Rudderbust. I'll type that up for you. So Gaxley of the local paper knows possibly of the black viper and so they wanted to ask you guys to go talk to you actually and see if you guys can find out anything and, and see what actually knows about the black viper all right you guys want to roll out now yep let's go sure all right is it uh, pretty close let me see does this say exactly where it is give me one second here Okay, it doesn't exactly say where it is, but then I guess it's probably not too far away. Probably over in the trades ward, I'm, I would assume, you know, publishing company. So probably Sounds over good. in that area. So. All right, we'll head on over. Okay, and when you guys head over there, uh, you guys go in to the building, and um, you guys see there's a, you know, a bunch of people walking around with, you know, coffee cups in their hands and smoking cigarettes and going into offices with glass windows and, you know, taking newspapers and slamming them down on the desk and, you know, yelling at each other and getting on phones and shit all the time. Looking, asking where Spider-Man is. So, you guys go in and uh, you were told that uh, that guy actually is a human male with a, he's a little short guy with a nice pot belly and a really dumb looking mustache. And then you actually walk in and see a guy that fits that description sitting behind a desk over to your right. You guys gonna go over and introduce yourselves? Yeah, let's uh, introduce ourselves. Just let them know what's going on, what we're here for. Okay, so you walk up, and uh, he's got his his face in a newspaper. You know, must be proofreading or something like that. But you guys walk up, and he tilts the paper down enough to story he can look over it with his eyes. You know, he's got some glasses on, looking up at you guys, and he's like, "Hey, uh, can I help you guys?" Out of the corner of my eye, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of keep an eye on the, the guy with the pot belly, and then I'm just gonna let him know that we're looking for uh, the black viper. We've been sent over here to uh, find the viper. Ah, uh, yeah, black viper. That's an interesting, interesting one. It seems there's been uh, roughly a dozen, a dozen, excuse me, uh, noble estates that have been robbed recently. Definitely seems like the kind of work of the black viper, and uh, guessing that he or she must be back around we never even never even knew much about it or about him or her but uh, let me see he says, and he says you know I don't really don't really know too much but I mean uh, you know money might help help me talk a little bit you know I don't know I always like money so fists are usually good for getting people to talk to. I don't have a problem beating up a, a newspaper publisher. His eyes, his eyes kind of get wide, and he kind of like, he starts to stand up a little bit, and his glasses start to halfway fall off of his face. So he puts his glasses back up with you know one hand on, and they're not even, they're still kind of askew. And he says, "Okay, okay, hang on. Uh, can you give me an intimidation? I'm assuming that was you can do intimidation or persuasion, but I'm guessing that was more of the uh, fist up in the air kind of gesture." Yep, sixteen. And yep good enough he says okay all right he says um as far as as far as i know from from what i've heard um the black viper actually is the twin sister of uh amalier uh, castle lantern i'll type that out for you and the castle lanterns are names that you guys would recognize you know noble we've heard it before known family in town yeah 
I'm not sure if I've said it in game, but your characters would know, would recognize that name. You know, uh, it's like uh, a family famous in town that's known. So, ah, the town Kardashians. Exactly. <laughs> Even have like a dumb name too. Did you, did so, you hear yeah. that thing about Kylie Jenner trying to uh, trying to trademark her name? <laughs> no. Wow! Not, so, not, not even kidding. This is a couple days ago in the news. Uh, Kylie Jenner tried to trademark Kylie, just the name Kylie, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the Australian whoever controls the trademarking industry in Australia uh, blocked it because Kylie Minogue was a thing beforehand. And the yeah. response was, well, this was a post on Murdered by Words, which is a subreddit, uh, said that, that uh, um, obviously they wouldn't have allowed that because Kylie Minogue is an internationally renowned star and Kylie Jenner is a second-rate reality TV trash or something like that. <laughs> like, their actual <laughs> response was, was, uh, was hilarious, just that, uh, you know, to bring her down a peg. Dumb bitch. <clears throat> Useless. Excuse me. So uh, Gashley says that um, again. He heard that it, that the Black Viper could possibly be, possibly be the uh, evil twin sister of uh, Amalia Castellanter, and that um, apparently the uh, Black Viper always wears a mask. And he's heard that that uh, they wear a mask to cover up a, a facial disfigurement that they have. So or that she, you know, because he said, okay, so twin sister, yeah, that she wears a mask to cover up. Uh, facial disfigurement so and he says but uh yeah castle Anter, amalia possibly your sister that's all i know uh can i detect any type of uh deception in him yeah i want to insight check that too whoever wants to i'll go for it okay those are actually both Really good roles. Uh, you definitely get the feeling that he's not telling the entire truth. Uh, like, you don't know exactly what it is, but he's definitely not telling the entire truth. So, like, he um, uh, he, he doesn't really uh, know anymore, you don't think, but he's definitely not telling you the truth about something, so... You want to squeeze it out of them? We may have to come back and do that when it's a little less light out. Gotcha. We're in the middle of a you know a newspaper publisher office, like there's people around. But yeah, I think we'll have to follow up on that. All right. Well, I'm going to thank him <laughs> for his time and uh, ask him, hey, uh, where can we uh, where can we talk outside of work uh, in case we have any further questions? He says, uh, I usually go get a drink at, uh, well, you know, I, I used to go to the Skewer Dragon, but it seems like that place is just getting more run down all the time, and uh, I'm not real rough and tumble, so I've been going over to the to the Yawning Portal. They're, they're the best tavern in town, so. If you like, we can, uh, we can get you a drink on the house if you come over to the Ghost Bar. He's like, uh, Ghost Bar, oh, that's that new place in town. I just haven't had a chance to go over there yet. And uh, on the house, you guys you guys must know the people that own it or something, huh? You guys friends? We'll cover the first few rounds. We got you. Yeah, okay. I, I never never mind having an ale or two. Um, I'm about to actually knock off here soon. It's almost uh, almost closing time for the day, so I'll meet you guys over there in about an hour or so. That's uh, so we're in the dock ward, isn't it? Are you guys in? No, no, no. Troll Skull Alley, that's where you guys are at, right? Is that where it is? That big three-story building that used to be there? Yeah, the one's being fixed up. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay, uh, yeah, so give me like an hour or so, guys. I just got to finish up some stuff here. Finish some proofreading. All right, that works. We'll see you there. Okay, so you guys just going to head over there, or do you want to do anything else first? Do we... I guess we don't really have enough information on, on Amalia Castle Lantern to follow up with that. I mean, I suppose we should, as far as trying to, to track down the Black Viper, but, uh, you know, maybe we get more information out of this guy first. I don't know. Up to, this is Sako's side quest, so what do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, let's get him drunk, let's see what else we can get out of him. 
cool. All right, so you guys uh, meet him over there. You know, about an hour or so later, you guys go into the tavern. Same little crowds there. Big Jerry, Little Jerry, usual people going in and out. Uh, you guys see, you know, little traces of uh, Woody in the back, but they don't really. Of course, nobody else sees that. And Sancho is tending bar as usual. And you guys see your uh, fat friend sitting over in the over in the corner at a table with this mustache and his glasses. So. All right, uh, I'll just go up to the bar and I'll just grab a couple of uh, a couple of ales, a couple of drinks, and uh, we'll head back to that table. Okay, um, Kasha, Rob, you guys going to? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have go sit right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> like actually up on the bench, or on the ground still? No, on the ground, just staring okay. at him. <laughs> Just sitting there with this tail moving back and forth, side to side, slowly. Yep. Okay. I think. He, I think maybe we should play cards. Okay. You know, just to kill the time with the drinks, right? That sounds like fun, doesn't it, everybody? Sure. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. <clears throat> then All what? Right. Uh, while we're playing cards, what I'm going to do is I have a vial of some stuff that I'm going to, uh, while it's my turn, because we'll be passing the cards around, taking turns dealing. While I'm dealing, I'm going to use that as a uh, a cover for a sleight of hand to pour something into his drink. Roll a sleight of hand for me, please. And I'm going to use my um, uh, uh, determination to give myself advantage on that. Okay. Oh, I forgot to roll the damage. Hang on. Well, not a whole lot better anyways, but an 11. Yeah, about the same. Okay. Uh, and with that one, I'm just say I don't think the DC was going to be super high anyway because he's more looking over at Ghost and hoping that Ghost doesn't bite him. I don't think he's really much looking at his drink yet. So. I would have I would have been making, you know, waiting a little bit until he's had a little bit to drink already too and while doing okay. cards to try to, you know, try to cover it as best as possible. With that too, is definitely not going to be a very high DC. So we'll just say he didn't even notice that. He just, you know, he just saw you slide a another beer over to him. He didn't even think twice about it. He's just like, oh, cool, thank you. Okay. You know, and so you guys are playing cards and and everything. And uh, uh, he's not very good at playing cards, by the way. He's 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 losing mostly, but he still <laughs> hasn't really care much. He actually is, is enjoying having somebody to talk to him. He doesn't seem like he gets a he's, he doesn't have a whole lot of friends. It seems like so. So I tried to put the link in, in chat, but uh, uh, apparently you can't link directly from there. It's basically a, it's essentially a zone of truth, except for only a single target. But once ingested or introduced to the bloodstream, the imbiber target must make a charisma saving throw. So he needs to make a charisma save against a DC okay. of 17. Damn. The little bubble popped up there. I could pick on. I could click on it. I just didn't put the description in the thing. Good. Yeah, when I when I click it, it uh, says unable to create window with data source, power char sheet, blah blah blah, a bunch of stuff. But you can actually read it on my sheet. So if you go to my actions tab, okay. you can see it. So he needs to make a con save and beat a seventeen, or a charisma save rather. Ah yeah, crap! Sorry. So how you, if you don't have stats for him, then you would basically take his charisma. So don't don't say this out loud, but whatever his charisma is. Yeah. So if it's if it's a ten, which is everybody's ten on by default, their ten is the average. So if it's above or below, you would add or remove the modifier. If it's if it's twelve, it'd be plus one. If it's eight, it'd be minus one, and so on. Um, yeah. And he needs to be to seventeen. So and this one uh, on a failed save, the creature can't uh, speak a deliberate lie while under the effects. Uh, the imbiber's target's pupils uh, dilate and its heart rate increases, meaning nearby intelligent creatures know whether the imbiber is under the effects or not. Meaning their their pupils dilate, so I'll be able to tell if it worked or not, um, if it affected him or not. Uh, an affected creature is aware of the effects and can thus avoid answering questions to which it would normally respond with a lie. Meaning if I ask him a question and he would lie, he could just choose not to answer. Uh, you know, I can intimidate him into answering if I choose to, but he can't specifically lie. Okay. Um, then when you he takes a few drinks and you do notice that he's his pupils are dilating. He's looking like a little a little different, you know. Again, like uh, uh, so more. I guess you can say like if he was high instead of drunk, kind of thing. And he's he's acting about the same, but you can his eyes look different when you, when you look at him. Uh, cool. Rough. Then, so. then we'll just keep playing cards, and then uh, Eldor can ask all the questions he has. I'll have a couple of questions as well, but uh, basically we can just keep playing and just pretend everything is normal, and he's just not able to lie. Okay. 
And from what you guys can tell, actually, can you guys, whoever's looking at him, can you uh, give me an insight check, please? Or, I definitely or, yeah. am. Okay, insight. I, I think that'd be the one for it. Okay. Yeah, it's not really hard, too hard to notice, and Rob definitely noticed for sure um, that, yes, his eyes are dilated, and also he doesn't seem to notice, so he is acting completely normal. Basically, from what you can tell, he doesn't seem to notice that uh, his eyes are dilated and stuff, so he doesn't know that he's been uh, Mickey. He doesn't know that he's stone, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, he, has, he, doesn't, he doesn't know that you guys GH beat him, so... Perfect. Well, uh, we'll just make some small talk while we play some cards. Uh, kind of revisit what he told us uh, at the at the news area. Uh, but this time, I'm going to probe a little bit deeper, specifically into the thief. What are uh, what do you really know? What can you say off the record about this thief? And just try and play the buddy card. And a very thorough physical description of what he knows about this twin sister. He says uh, the, the the castle lanterns. They're uh, they're kind of odd. They're um, I've seen them wear like uh, weird robes and stuff before. Um, at night, you know, I've, I've seen them before. I was walking, you know, walking home or you know, walking through there, and uh, I, I see them leaving and wearing some kind of odd-looking robes. And they always had the hoods up, and you couldn't really see their faces. And and, and they have like their hands together, and, and the the sleeves of the robes are really baggy, you know, so they look like um monks or something almost kind of and, and they just i don't know they seem weird and they had these uh chains around their necks with with the a, a, a kind of weird looking runic kind of symbol on it that i've never that i've never seen before but it looked a little scary so you know like the weird devil worship kind of stuff is what i i feel it, it really freaked me out were they with anyone else in robes or were they just solo I just saw a few people leaving their house. Again, you know, it was late at night and stuff. They they didn't know that I was walking by, but they walked down, uh, you know, a street behind their house. And I and I was way too scared to follow them. But I just looked and and all I saw was just a few people leaving the house. I mean, maybe, maybe four or five. I didn't see a whole lot, and I didn't see them meet with anybody else. But I didn't follow them. I was too scared. Have you only seen this happen once, or have you seen this happen several times on specific days? No, I've only seen this happen once, but I also know that they, like, I mean, of course, the, all the nobles have guards around their house, but they don't seem to really like having a lot of people over. They're kind of kind of quiet, which is weird. Makes you think they're hiding something. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're just not very social, but they just have a lot of guards around their place, and, uh, the, you know, if, if you get anywhere near the, the guards, the, you know, they, they sound these trumpets, and then the city watch shows up, and moves you away at least if not arrest you for harassing people and yeah so they don't let anybody near their house too many people near their house really except for just you know some friend you know people that seem like friends will come in but strangers don't seem too welcome there from what i've seen with that i'll kind of nod at uh, rav and just give him give him the, the eye nod what about this this twin sister that you said is is a uh, has some facial scarring what does she look like? Tell me, you know, exactly what she looks like. Uh, I, I don't know. I just know. I just know that I've, I've seen um, somebody wearing a black mask. And that's who, you know, the Black Viper is supposed to be. And that's why they have me writing it. I just, I saw somebody leaving, you know, the, the Noble Estates again on my way home through, through the through the neighborhood there one time. And I just saw somebody with, with a black mask and they were running through and they had a, you know, bag in their hand. So I thought it had to be that with all the robberies that had been going on. I figured the Black Viper must be back in town because that's exactly what she looked like. You know, same kind of mask and everything. But I've never seen her face, so I don't know what she actually looks like, though. But I've heard she wears a mask because her face is scarred up or, or, or something like that, or maybe burned or something. And what, where did you get the information that, that you think, anyways, that this is the twin sister of Amalia? That's just what the people around the office say. I don't. I don't even actually know that. I just, you know, it just s seems like it might make sense. They're real secretive, like I said, and weird, weird stuff. But I don't really know why they would have have a need to go ha have somebody from their family steal from other people. They have a lot of money, so I don't really know why. With that, they just, I don't know. They're kind of weird. So I, I guess I believe. I, I do believe it because he wouldn't say he guesses. Of course, he says I believe it. You know, 
but but I don't know. It's just word around the office. Where can we find Amalia? Well, Amalia and her twin potentially, if we needed to talk to them. I have no idea where you're going to find Black Viper at. Uh, I don't even know. I honestly, I believe him, you know, but I've never seen it myself, so I don't even know if it's actually if it's actually true. But I just know those robberies, and I saw that person in the mask. So, uh, and then and then the castle lanterns are always there's there's almost always somebody from the family home at their estate in, in the where all the rest of the rich folk live. Well, I guess which which noble houses have been hit. And then, based on that, I would try to figure out, you know, which one is next most likely to be hit. You know, which one might he be says, next. He says, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know for sure exactly which ones have been, but I know um, the the one, the, the house actually, not two other houses down from the Castle Lanterns was the one that was hit most recently. And uh, I'll have to think of a name for that one because it doesn't say anything in here but one of their neighbors two houses down was the one that got hit mo hit most recently i heard about that one and he does know the you know the, the family's name but i'll have to you know think of it for you guys in a minute and he says uh and he says uh, the rest of them i'm not sure which ones they are but i've heard there's been like 11 or 12 so far houses hit for the noble estates i don't know what do you guys think do you have enough info out of this guy you know specifically what what's being taken from these houses uh are they is there a pattern to what they take or what they search yeah he says that he he doesn't really know because the only uh, what he's heard is just general information so uh probably you know like their jewels stuff like that he would assume but he doesn't know for sure and he hasn't heard of anything odd uh any kind of uh pattern or anything for stuff except for just general valuables being taken uh, just between the, uh, the three of us, uh, would we know, like, something locally in the news of, of reports of multiple houses being broken in? Like, are they reporting these? Uh, he have says... We, have we heard around town that this is happening? In other words, is it a public known thing? No, it's not. And um, uh, so, like, in, it, it wouldn't be a known thing. And the wazoo, uh, you guys know from being in town, is like a, a rag, for sure. It's definitely not considered legitimate you know um uh, journalism with so, a name like wazoo yeah. well that doesn't that doesn't yeah. add up yeah and their paper is called like serious journalism no it's called water deep wazoo but uh yeah they're definitely more of a rag i mean i'm sure every once in a while this might stumble onto something real and you don't know if this is one of those cases but it's that and then if there is anything going on like you know the city watch has been has been seen in there and stuff and so uh something's been going on but it, the, the details you, you don't really know for sure because obviously you know that he's telling you the truth but he's just telling you like he already said what he's heard around the office except for the stuff he saw with his own eyes like when he saw the castle lanterns leaving the house in their robes and, and seeing a woman with a black mask in a bag skirting the neighborhood so, All right, how much of it is actually true you guys don't know but do we know if any of the houses hit were like enemies of them like specific enemies of the castle, of the castle Liners? Liners? yeah it's a good idea yeah. he says that he's he's not really sure he doesn't know again which other house is the only one again he knew of was the people a couple of doors down and they've never been known to dislike each other in any kind of serious fashion so he says not that he knows of but he's not he, he's not sure so okay what do you think guys you want to check out the house at night yeah, I, I don't know, like, even a specific... I guess we could, you know, hang out around the Castle Liner's house. As for, you know, what they might hit next, I don't know. It, it seems like it'd probably be a spread out area. Yeah. So there's no pattern, there's no anything. There's no specific items they seem to be looking for. Does the gauntlet... I guess they wanted us to look into the Black Viper thing, but were they expecting us to find the Black Viper and, and you know potentially intercede and capture them, or or what is the, I guess what is their what is what does Eldor need to do to fulfill what their request is? The request that they gave you guys was to talk to Gaxley and find out as much as he knows, because he's the only name that they've heard of that knows anything about the about the Black Viper. 
so you guys have actually fulfilled what the guild has asked you to do uh anything further i mean you guys can do it if you want to but anything further was not requested by the guild so you guys have actually already fulfilled just by talking to actually and you guys were actually really definitely thorough with that too so i'm sure they'll be happy with that but again you guys do whatever you want but you have fulfilled what what uh order the gauntlet asked you to do all right with that information then uh we'll just note all of that and uh take it back to to them and turn in the quest okay all right guys one second afk i'll be right back I'm thinking maybe if they get this information, they might have another lead that we can check, or it might put two and two together with something that they might already know. Maybe. Uh, so far, just uh, uh, from a meta standpoint, uh, out of narrative, <clears throat> uh, their necromancer wasn't there, so we just took care of the skeletons, and that leaves that open. So it might be, you know, the next chapter's side mission is to deal with the necromancer. And then it could be the same yeah. thing for, for yours is that we, you know, got the information about the Black Viper here and then next chapter side mission might be to actually go find her. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, we were very thorough with the interview, so. Yeah. So you guys heading back to the guild report, what you guys found out? Yeah, back to yeah, the Yeah, just to take the notes back to them, yep. Okay. And when you guys head back in, they they see you guys and they're like, Oh, hey guys, uh, did, did you actually talk? Anything worth mentioning? Pretty much everything that we uh, were talking to them, we wrote down. And uh, we just gave them a copy of those notes. Okay. Look it over and say, huh, interesting. And then castle lanterns, huh? huh, huh? There's been talks of them being a little odd, possibly, so maybe it is a little bit true. And then one well, in a mask. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we very much appreciate it as uh, so far you've been very helpful and uh, haven't let us down. Thank you very much, Eldor. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, now we uh, you have even more renown with us. So you guys each have... Uh, Akasha and Eldor both have two renowned points with their respective guilds. So, uh, and then also, uh, nope, actually no money for this one. Apparently they're cheap when you just go get information. So you just get more <laughs> renowned with the guild. So I would throw money in, but you guys already got a million bucks. So. <laughs> Sounds good. And, and they say, uh, all right, well, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, we'll actually, uh, whenever whenever you're ready, I'm sure soon we'll have another job for you soon, Eldor, because we're always uh, looking for good help. So thank you very much. Because, uh, again, you guys are officially starting the new chapter, so you guys can do your new side missions whenever you feel like it. So, I mean, because after we finish these side missions, you guys will be starting chapter four, which has all new side missions again. So that's what she was talking about. Sounds good. Okay, guys, um, did you want to do, you guys didn't get jacked up or anything, so I don't need to buy a long rest, but um, that probably didn't take very long, so do you want to go, uh, actually, no, because you guys met him that, okay, so no, you guys, you know, stay after you reported um, back to the guild and stuff, then you guys probably would have hung out for the night and started off the next day, so was there anything else you guys wanted to do the rest of that day after reporting there and talking to Gaxley, uh, or did you want to just uh, get started the next morning and possibly find out about Rob's mission. Um, I'm actually going to go to 
Corellin's crown and buy some climbing potions. I have a feeling they're going to come in handy. Okay, and, and buy some... Uh, buy some what, Levy? Potion of climbing. Okay. Let me go find those. So, we don't have to jump over walls anymore. We can just climb. <laughs> <laughs> and they get attacked by dogs and a crazy guy. Yeah. And 50 gold... So when you get in there, she says, uh, hey, hey, uh, Fala is in there. And um, she says, hey, good to see you again. Uh, is it just you, babe, or did uh, Eldor and Rob go to? I probably just stayed at the bar. Yeah, I stayed back, too. Okay. So just you, and I'm assuming Ghost is with you, honey. Oh, yeah. He goes with me everywhere. Okay. So she says, hey, nice to see you, too. And looks down at Ghost and looks up at you and says, uh, what can I get for you today in Dubai? Hopefully. Uh, yeah, I wanted to take a look at your potions of climbing. Oh, I got some, got some scaling to do, huh? Well, I have um, plenty of those, uh, 50 gold pieces each. I'm, I'm sure you know how those can help you. So, mm -hmm. how many would you like? Four. Okay. Where's that? All right, I'll just pull it up in the items. All right, so go ahead and mark off that gold, babe, and let me pull that up for you on the items. I already did. Okay. And then before I head back, I'm heading to the bent nail, and I'm going to sell my other longbow. Okay. Actually, I'm going to sell a couple things that I have that I don't need. said four potions of climbing, right, honey? Yeah. Okay. There we go. You have four potions of climbing in your inventory. Okay, um, your bow, uh, any, and what else? Uh, I apparently have a staff. I don't know where I got that from. But I don't need that. Okay. And, uh, and since we're in the city, I'm getting rid of my hunting trap. Okay. Um, then... See, uh, is there a way to check and see like what the resale value on those would be homes, or just kind of generalize it? I'll just wing it based on shape of it. Look at the what the buy price is, and then you know mark it down by enough to consider how much they'd be able to resell it for. Okay, and where are the prices listed? Is that a, is there something in Fantasy Grounds, or do I need to look it up? No, you can see it Fantasy Grounds. Uh, go to items, and then at the top okay. you'll see a button that says weapons. And then that list, just find the longbow. You can search longbow at the bottom. Okay. That should show you a price in the columns. The longbow is normally 50 gold. 50 GP. Yeah. yeah. So selling it so. probably 30. I mean, okay. it's in good shape. That that gives them enough for them to be able to resell it and still make a profit. Yeah. So 30 there. And then it's a quarter staff, honey? It just says staff. Okay. When I type in staff, all it is is quarter staffs in here anyway. And basic ones don't cost much. A couple of silver pieces. So it'd be like a silver piece if you want to sell it. That's fine. Okay. So 30 GP, one silver piece. And then a hunting trap? Yeah. Would that be under items or something, G? Um, it's under adventuring gear, I think. Let me see. Okay. Uh, five gold. And okay. it weighs 25 pounds. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Good thing you got rid of that. <laughs> yeah. So, another, what, couple of gold for that, G? Two, three? Yeah, probably three is fine. Yeah, so 33 gold and one silver. All right. Nice little buyback there. And don't forget to take all that stuff out of your inventory, honey. I already did. All right. <sighs> and you have your potions, okay. Uh, anything else, guys? I think I'm good. 
Yep, I'm done. Cool. All right, guys. So you guys head the next day. You guys go over to the place where the Harpers are. And Mert is in there again, your old friend that you saw at the opera. I would have spent the afternoon refilling my Veritas. Was that some of your alchemy stuff? Sorry. Yeah, it's the thing I use to make him tell the truth. Okay. All right. Then here is the information on the quest. Hang on, I'll share it to you guys. But uh, when you guys get in, Mart is in there and says, "Hey, hey, nice to see you fellas again. Good, good to see you, Rav." And says, "Um, and this this one's kind of uh, interesting, but uh, we we need you to hopefully save one of our uh, one of our friends' cats." So when he looks over at Akasha and says, "We see that you're feline friendly." Yep. See, this I know might that be more of a Sako mission. <laughs> <laughs> Sako loves exactly. cats. I, I always had cats when we were kids too. But... Yeah, and uh, it's more about says, bees um, now. <laughs> and they say, yeah, a, a friend of ours, uh, Uza Solazeth. Hang on, I'll type that out for you. It's on the mission thingy. The thing okay, shared. awesome. And says that her shop has uh, been um, apparently entered by some kind of creature that is running around, destroying things and trying to eat her cat. And uh, as far as she knew, the cat was still okay because it had itself hiding up on top of uh, one of the really high book shelves and everything. But yeah, probably not going to last for too long. So if you guys are in the mood to be feline friendly, they'd really appreciate it. Yeah, we can do that. So a cat, something's breaking in trying to eat her cats? Yeah, because, well, she came running in, you know, totally crazy and crying and everything and saying that some uh, really weird looking creature uh, that was floating into her shop actually uh, floated into her shop which doesn't make sense to me but something floated into her shop and is chasing the cat around I'm guessing trying to eat it like Alf but we don't really yeah know. I was about to say now that it's floating we, we can kind of rule one person out you know <laughs> and, uh, was they, that like her, an 80s theme song <laughs> is that the, the Alf theme, theme song? song? <laughs> I was going to say, is that the Alf theme song? Awesome. See, so, yeah, uh, her shop is the, the narrow three-story building on Soren Street in the trades ward, the big old bookshop over there. And um, if you guys wouldn't mind going to see if you can help out poor Toonsis, wouldn't, we wouldn't want him to die. Yeah, let's go check it out. Apparently she's a crazy lady, so the city watch won't help is what it says. Yeah, because she's a, you know, cried wolf before, it sounds like, so, but she seemed really distraught, so could you at least go check it out, and hoping, and, you know, if it is real, we don't want the poor cat to be eaten, so. Yep, let's go. Okay, so you guys move on over to the trade ward, and go find the building there, and you guys head inside, and let me get a map for you guys. Incoming. No, I know the map is actually a tavern, but just imagine you're in a bookstore. The big, giant, three-story bookstore. So. It's bugged for me, it's, so it'll be a minute before it shows up. Okay. So it's a large peasants and nobles bookstore. <laughs> exactly. There's just a coffee house right in the middle of it, too. Oh, ghosty. All right, and when you guys enter into the shop, you hear plenty of banging and moving around from your east behind a door that's over there behind that wall. And uh, you hear a, a cat kind of screeching and doing that really low guttural, you know, um, like, uh, like, I don't know, 
know to think of the word for it, but yeah, really pissed off cat screeching growling. and hissing and stuff. Yeah, and then you hear stuff getting banged around too, and like you know, nice little cat growl and everything. So, coming from your east. Let's go check it out. Yeah, let's see if we can find the cat. I'll use uh, speak with animals on it. Oh, I can now too. I forgot. I can speak with animals now too. Primeval awareness. That means all three of us can. Yep. That's cool. You, you even have that G? That's kind of cool. Yeah, I got it with the last level. Uh, the last ranger level I just took. Primeval Oh, awareness. yeah. I forgot that you're part ranger, if that makes sense. That's awesome, though. Yep. Okay, uh, now, do you guys have to be able to see your target, or is it just a, a range, or...? This one, for primeval awareness, so for Becky and I, is not a special thing we have to use. It's basically you have an innate ability to communicate with beasts and they recognize you as a kindred spirit. Uh, through sounds and gestures, you can communicate simple ideas to a beast as an action uh, and can read its basic mood and intent. You learn its emotional state, whether it's affected by magic of any sort, uh, its short-term needs such as food or safety, and uh, actions that you can take, if any, to persuade it not to attack. Okay. And we can't if we attack a creature we can't use this to talk to them for the next 10 minutes okay <clears throat> well when you guys do that then you but uh Sokko's, start to... sorry Sokko's, I think actually, yeah Sokko, i think can actually like talk talk like get yeah. back and forth communicate back and forth okay then uh use you gonna try it Sokko? uh yeah yeah so that way okay so you kind of, you know, start concentrating on the sounds of the cat that you hear from, from behind that wall over there, and you kind of connect, and then as you get this, um, uh, what's coming at you is, you know, like a lot of fear, and uh, again, the cat's in distress, you know, like Jeremy just said, whether it needs food or it's unsafe or whatever, it is definitely in distress and fearing for its life, and then uh, it's just all, you know, definitely scared as hell, that's the feeling that you're getting coming from it, so... All right, I could do some basic communication with it. Um, I can see it, right? Uh, no, you can't, but you do have its, uh, you know, you guys are thinking to each other, you know. All right, I guess you can say telepathically connected. I'll kind of cry out and just say hello. Where, where are you at? We're here to help. It says, well, well, what? I, well, weird. Um, this, something's trying to eat me. I don't know what the hell this thing is. It's just, it, you know, it, it, it looks like my master has uh, two eyes this thing just has one big one and, and some other ones hanging off these little stalks it's flying around i don't know what the hell this thing wants but it's got big teeth too that's another gazer that yeah, little baby, like another baby gazer. Boulder. Okay. all right i'm gonna scream back to the cat um where are you at we're gonna come protect you um where are you at it says uh, uh says well i'm a i'm, I'm, I'm the, the <laughs> all the way on the far wall of, of the shop i'm a on the east side of the building all right i'm gonna move out to here and see if i can slice the pie see if i can see the cat okay and you do see a black cat over there which you would assume is Toonsis, and that was, of course, the cat that you were talking to. And then you also do see, uh, first, you actually see dun, 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 a scary floating eye. And it was, you know, over here trying to get at Toonsis, but then it hears something in the doorway and looks over and now sees that you're bigger and more of a potential threat, so it is coming this way. Roll initiative, please, guys. We got a combat music. Yes. Let's see if I can find something good. Does it look the same as the one that we found in the sewers? Or is it bigger? This one is roughly the same size. Uh, you know, that one was a grapefruit size. This one's, a, you know, a little bit bigger. You know, maybe like a, a coconut. So, but not, definitely not huge. So. Cool. Wow, I cannot roll today to save my life. Is this the... Oh, I thought it was a bird squawk one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was similar, huh, at first. It's the same music, it just has a different, uh, like, sound, a beast sound over it. Because it's the same combat music they just put, like, for these, there's, we've heard a couple of these tracks already, where it's the same music, but a different, uh, like, uh, like, animal or, or monster sound over top of it. Okay. 
Okay, either one of your initiative rolls would have been good, but either way, round one begins with Rob. Um, I still can't see the map, so is there like is it is it clear between me and, and that floating eye? If I move, if I move around to kind of inter basically, can I move to here without getting in the way, without having to jump over something? Yeah, there's a doorway to go through, uh, and Eldor is standing in the doorway. But I'm sure if you just did like a uh, or whatever and, and double movement or whatever, you can I'm sure squeeze past him, right? Is that how that would go? Yeah, it would be. He... Well, I mean, no, actually, if if he's in the doorway, then uh, well. Can you move through friendlies? I don't think you really can. I mean, especially not with his size, he'd be probably blocking it. So I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to get to. Uh, like if that's, I can't see it. So I mean, if that's actually a doorway and there's a wall there, then I wouldn't probably even be able to see the floating eye. So I won't really be able to do anything. Okay. I'll just wait here. So, cause it's yeah, it's you, you'd be able to see it from where you're at, but Eldor is in your way. So if you tried anything range, you'd have to get through the doorway and, and not hit Eldor's, you know, seven foot frame. Yeah. So. You got the map right, baby? Uh, yeah. Okay, because it's your turn. So. No, I'm trying to figure it out. Hang on. I'm going to back up here and hold my action for once I can actually get a clear shot. Okay, and... screenshot, Jeremy. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to bonus action Hunter's Market. Okay. I'm I'm gonna like for for my turn. All I really would be able to do, I, I mark him as well, so that uh, if he comes within range, I'm gonna jab him. Okay. But that's it. Okay. Uh, Sako, it's your turn, sir. All right. How far can I move? Is that a space behind him that I can get around, like back over yeah. here? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you could get in between because that was the table legs right there. So you would be right next to that table is what it was. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stand between uh, him and the cat, and uh, I'm going to tell the cat, run back, kind of hide under the table, get out of here. Okay. And Toon just goes, gladly. Real. Is Opal over there? Not in the fire, just, you know, under the table over there. <laughs> kind of hiding behind, the, looking out the corner, watching what's going on. And uh, I'm instantly going to uh, cast Bane on the floating eye. Okay. It succeeds. Does it do anything on a failed save? Because they succeeded on a save. So. Uh, checking here. Girl. Uh, let's make sure the DC is right, though, G. Um, what was the? Oh yeah, because it was modifiers and shit. Yeah. So his DC should be eight plus his proficiency plus his spellcasting modifier. His spellcasting modifier would be plus five and proficiency plus two. So basically whatever, um, it would be eight plus seven. So 15, did he roll higher than a 15? It got an eight. Oh, actually, sorry. Well, it would be 16 actually, because it's plus one from his holy symbol. So 16, yeah. but if he got an 18, then, yeah. then he still wins. Or he still succeeded. Yeah. All right, Sako, any bonuses? Um, can I just uh, try and stab it in the face with uh, the knife? Yeah, right, Chief. You don't have to do a melee the first time to do an offhand, do you? Um, you're supposed to have to use the attack action, I think, to use a bonus action as an attack. Okay. Uh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Then I guess uh, I'll just kind of hunker down and just uh, prepare for impact. Okay. And it is Ghosty's turn. Alrighty. can't get a straight running leap at him, so he's just going to stand over here. And because he's flanking, it's plus two, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's just going to take a swipe. Mm. It hits. Nice. Oh, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Ghosty sends his claw out and catches it, and it's on a not actually in the eye because that probably would have hurt a bit more. But on it's, a, I guess you'd call it a skin or whatever the hell it would be. Gets a little slash on him, draws a little blood, and it is the eye's turn. Let's see what he's gonna do. There we go. Yeah, so he moves over first. He actually, with a ghost, he's standing there. He looks right at Ghost and starts to squint a little bit like that. And you actually see this light, like a, not a laser, but like a light kind of ray thing coming out of its eye and shooting over at Ghosty. And see. Uh, uh, can you. Give me a wisdom save on Ghost Honey. You gotta do the 12. Oh man, wisdom is not good. Oh, whoops. Grabbed the wrong one. Damn it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did it anyway, though. Sweet. So, yeah, he sends out this little beam at Ghost that goes into Ghost's eyes, but it doesn't seem to do anything this time. Like, he doesn't seem to react so and let's see yep okay and so since apparently the cat is not easy to manipulate he turns around to the wildebeest and can you also give me a wisdom saving throw for him? Oops. Yep, okay, so he turns back around, looks at you, starts squinting, and sends out a little beam too into your face, but it doesn't seem to have affected you either because you passed your save. He is... That's his turn, and it's your turn, Holmes. Okay, so... Um... I, I guess there's a door through the middle, so that I don't know what, how much movement that would be to get there. But I'm not, uh, I'm not too worried. Uh, you know what? Actually, if there's space I enough, I'll, okay. If there's space enough, I'll, I'll kind of split the difference between Ghost, just kind of, kind of spin around Ghost and get around to this side, so that Akasha would still have room to take a shot. Um, and I will give him a good poke. Okay. Yeah, where you're at, your back's just up against the table right there, but you do have space to stand there. Okay. So. Yeah, Sako sent me a screenshot so I can see it a little bit. Like, I just, you know, obviously tokens aren't in the correct place anymore, but that's it. Uh, so, we, like, yeah. I, can, I can see it kind of where, where stuff would be, so. All right, I'm going to go... He's already acted, so I don't have that. I'll use my determination to give myself advantage to, to jab him. And I'm going to lead him as well. For 25. Such an update. Thanks, Taco. Alright. Uh, has he already been wounded? Has he hurt it all yet? Uh, Slight no. scratch. No, 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 wait a minute. Yeah, ghost. Ghost whacked him. So, yes, he's perfect. Alright, hell yeah. I get an extra D8 for that then. And my bleed. <laughs> well, that nice. didn't last long. I even rolled minimum damage, too. I rolled a 1 on the main die. Alright, so I guess bleeding's not going to matter. I'll just jab my spear through his eyeball and out the backside. Yep, and that was... Yep, okay, so, yeah, it's uh, definitely killed him. So, you go to jab him, and he ends up uh, almost getting stuck into the wall when you jab him there. So, right through his eye, and he is toast. I'm gonna grab my wet bag, the, the the bag that I got that's coated in oil specifically to be able to use this, um, and I'll just put kind of put the spearhead in it with the grapefruit shape, and then just pull the spear out, so I have the whole okay. whole head, the whole floating eyeball in there. Okay. So you pick that up and put it in your bag. Nice. 
What was it? And it was called a gazer, right? Yes. There we go. I put it in my inventory. Okay. Cat looks okay. And, uh, yep, June just, uh, pops out. Are you still, uh, connected to it mentally? Does it still last like that, or? Yeah, it stays that way for ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, it pops out, and, and you can hear it, Sako, when it walks out. It says, ooh, is it over now? Is that the old nasty thing gone? Looks like it's gone, Cat. You want some? I'm gonna I'm gonna eat it, but you're welcome to have some. Cat says, uh, I, I prefer mice, but I don't know, the thing does look kinda good, doesn't it? I can cut off one of the little eye stalks and give it to him. So he comes up, starts munching on it, and he's like, Yeah, yeah and a little odd, but I kinda like the texture though. It's kinda fun mm -hmm. to chew on. So it's sitting there chewing on it. And while it's doing that, it's like rubbing off on Sako's legs, doing like the figure eight in between you know, one leg and then around the other one and circles around both legs. You rub it on you. Just thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, Ghost is glaring at him for <laughs> giving him an ice talk and not Ghost. <laughs> well, I mean, I can, I can, uh, goes, with, with primeval awareness, I can, just, I can see that Ghost know, is. He a... wasn't really paying too much attention and then he goes over and sees a big giant cat and Sako hears him say, Hey man, how much do you eat? How the hell did you get so big? And ghost, like obviously, they're ghost and him can somewhat understand each other. So ghost is kind of just mildly amused, kind of looking at him. But Sako can hear Tunes is saying that, so he thinks he's a regular house cat, which is really big. Oh. And then Tunes just says, "Where's, where's the old woman? Where's my master?" Oh, I guess uh, I'll just put my hand down for the cat to run into the hand, and I'll say, I'll, "We'll bring you up to her, and uh, I'll give him a ride on the shoulder." Okay. While we're walking, I'll cut off an eye stalk and toss it to Ghost. <laughs> All right. So Ghost grabs that and he's chewing it as he's walking, like dropping little pieces of it and stuff on accident. Ew. And then stopping to <laughs> pick him up and carry him back on. Sorry, Ghost wasn't trying to be rude. So you guys head back and the uh, old lady is still at the guild hiding out. So when you guys hit in, Uza is in there with uh, Mert. So. You guys gonna tell her the good news? Yep. Let her know that uh, we killed a beast that was trying to eat her cat, and the cat's safe. And uh, hand her her cat back. And if I mean, if anybody's hungry, you know, I got I, I got plenty. <laughs> they say, uh, do you pull the the gazer out? And show yeah, them? I'll just I'll just open the bag to show them that it's dead. I'm just kidding, of course, just showing them evidence that it's dead. They're like, yeah, what? The, they they both the. Uh... Well, Mert, not as much, but Uza jumps back like the, and says, What the hell is that thing? That's really nasty. Is that what was in my shop, trying to get Tunesis? Yeah, we saw one of these before in the sewers. So, first time we've seen one above ground, but um, yeah, they, they can be pretty dangerous. So, that is one weird-looking thing. I've never seen one of those before. Well, I'm, I'm glad you guys got it, and, and thank you for saving saving my precious kitty cat. He'll never be able to drive again if he got eaten. And Tunesis, you know, is rubbing up against her leg, and he's all happy and stuff. So, I don't know if the. It's probably been more than 10 minutes, so I don't think you can hear him anymore, Sako, but you guys can look at him and see that he's definitely relieved. And the old woman seems very happy to have her kitty back. And she says, Is, is the shop safe now? I mean, at least by that, I, I, we didn't really look around beyond just killing this thing. She says, uh, Yeah, well, unless there's. Unless there's uh, some people decided to try to. You know, rob the shop, then I guess I should be fine, but I don't think anything is going to go in there here and all that commotion if they saw that thing. So, yes, and it's probably safe, so I better head back. And she thanks you guys and, and thanks Mert for the for the help and for the help of the Harpers. And then she said, Oh, one more thing though. I actually uh, I have a, a present for you guys if you want to come by the shop. I have a, a really nice um, spell book you guys might be interested in. So, I don't know if any of you guys are fluent in the arcade arts, but really really special book that I know has a has a some uh, magic properties to it in my shop and I'd be willing to give it to you guys for a thank you gift sure definitely 
Okay, so you guys head over to the shop. Uh, nothing else is there. I mean, it's just, you know, fucking torn apart because that cat running around and the gazer and everything, but nothing seems out of place besides that. And you get, uh, also, you know, before you leave, Mert tells you, thank you, Sako, or, or uh, G, and says that, you know, you get into another renown point with the guild and that they're really appreciating your help. And so how that goes is... I guess you guys get to choose. We'll have to figure it out because it doesn't say really any details, but it is a wizard spellbook that has four first level and three second level spells written in it. Okay. So. Uh, there's a there's a couple of generators uh, that I use online when I need to make a random list. Like, basically, if it just picks random spells. Uh, so I'll show you how to pull that, and you can just roll something on that. And, we'll, you know, we, we're not arcane casters, but, you know, if we have somebody that comes across or if another player joins or something like that, we could always give it to them or sell it or something. Okay. And so with that, you guys wouldn't be able to use those because you're not wizards, right? Yes. But, well, I mean, if we if somebody picked up like the Magic Initiate feat, for example, or Ritual Caster, and they were Ritual spells, things like that, the way that uh, uh, Artemis did in Bentonburst, um, like she, you know, with that spell book that you guys got from Scatter, if she goes over that, for example, and there's Ritual spells in there, then she can copy those. So that kind of an idea. But if we, you know, if we have another player that joins that, you know, rolls up a, a arcane caster of some kind, then it could be useful for them, or we get to sell it, that kind of thing. Cool. Or if somebody decides to pick up uh, magic initiate or ritual caster as a feat. Awesome. So I added the spell book to your guys' party inventory. So whenever we get a chance, we will do the generating of the spells there. We can do that when we're done, G, I guess, if you want to. Cool. So. Or we can do it next time, whatever you guys want to do. But she says thank you again, and you know, hands you guys the book. So, and that is actually it for the side quest. So you guys gonna head back to the tavern and rest up and see if anything's going on. Yeah. Or did you guys want to do anything else? Uh, I don't have anything do else with these guys. Rest. So, yeah. As soon as we get back, Ghost is pouncing on Rob. By the way, and giving him a they look across the face. Gross. With that eyeball stuff? Ugh. Yeah, he's got on his tongue. <laughs> I, I, was kid, I was kidding about eating that, dumb dog. He doesn't care. He's not picky. Nope. I'm he sure he anything. could like it. I don't want to taste it. Yeah, he's, he's not like Morris. He doesn't insist on nine lives. <laughs> All right, so let me bring that up. So you guys head back to the tavern. Uh, again, the usual crowd is there. And uh, Istrid is still hanging around, doing her, you know, job, dressed up as a uh, Jorn, I think the name was, looking, trying to look like a male dwarf, which isn't really hard for female dwarfs. So, so that was it for the side quest. So we are officially moving into chapter four. All right. Do you have the intro for for four prepared? I mean, we've got another fifteen minutes or so. So, I mean, even with that, Sako, we finished all three of them. It was only fifteen minutes over the normal session length. Yes, no problem. Because we started half hour early. Cool. And actually, the first um, part of that was actually even just doing the level anyway, so cool. Yeah, so we will go ahead and get started on that if you guys want to. Yeah, we might as well do the intro real quick. Are those yeah. those yeah. are masks, right? Those um, aren't like ugly goblin kids. They're actually just giant masks. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that those are masks. Because, you know, that one in the front, the kid from the side, you can yeah, like still it, see the it hair, has yeah. hair or whatever. So, yeah. So, I'm guessing that's what it would be. And the one burning is not really a giant burning goblin dragon man. It's not, burning at least. man. <laughs> Everybody's just getting high in the middle of fucking town. <laughs> Bunch of hippies. Okay. All right, so you guys know that the when the uh, Nimble Wright left Gralhan Villa, you know, because Lady Gralhan was a bitch and sent it off when you guys went there to investigate and it got away before you guys did, and you know it uh, has a map because the lady gave it a map with, of course, whatever its destination is, and then the Stone of Galore, which is an item that you are very interested in. Okay, guys, so uh, you just need to start searching around. Um, again, you guys do know that you can uh, uh, go see 
if the guilds that you guys are friends with can help you in any way uh, maybe help you search uh, help you know things like that things to make your search easier again you guys remembered you could if you're lucky enough borrow a griffin to go fly around and see if you can find it but basically somewhere in town is that one-eyed nimble right that has the stone of galore and you need to find it hmm yeah i guess if that's our our primary uh you know initial goal basically is to still find that that nimble right then the necrifus couldn't hurt to uh how uh, is it borrowing multiple like we each fly well i guess we need never mind it would just have to be eldor because we would eldor would have to be or whoever's carrying the, the detector anyways would have to be within range and unless the griffin can carry three people including one of them being you know a, a half giant you guys might be able to see if you can convince him to borrow two do two and two just ghost and eldor can't go on the same one because i think that would just be a little bit too much weight so i don't know about <laughs> getting getting a cat to write a griffin is probably a bad idea <laughs> yeah yeah so that's true that, but... i'd probably leave him at the bar that actually is a good point so yeah, because I don't really know how he'd even stay in there unless you, like, tuck a rope and tied him down somehow. I don't think he, he probably like gets air sick. Much. Air lift him so. like a cow. <laughs> just tie him off the bottom. So you guys can, um, I mean, it would be even harder, but you could find out about possibly getting two. Uh, you know, Eldor could use his own since he's big, giant, uh, um, what would it be, uh, a deer, you know, or a stag or something. He's a moose. And then the <laughs> Rob and, and uh, Akasha could ride on one. So if you guys can convince him to do that, if not, maybe you can just convince him to let you borrow one and Eldor could fly around, try to find the location. And then when he does, he could send, you guys still have that paper bird, remember? So you guys could, he could send a note back when he finds out, uh, when he pings the location. Yeah, I think, I so. think I stay on the ground and I'll just, you know, run along underneath you guys, like, cause I'll be able to see both of them up in the air anyway, at least, you know, follow along as best I can. So I'll just stay on the ground and run, um, and ghost can run with me if you want. Uh, and then Akasha, who has better eyes, and Eldor, who has the pinging majig, can fly around. <clears throat> that sound good? I might try to ride Ghost. Like, maybe get a saddle and try to ride him. Like He-Man style? Like He-Man Battle Cat, exactly. Yeah, Cringer. No, he better not be Cringer. I fed He's him an eyeball. Cringer than a Battle Cat. There's no battle in that cat. He got an eyeball. He should be powered up. You should be fucking uh, Popeye on spinach right now. <laughs> exactly. He, he filled with nutrients. Okay, so you guys going to head over to the Order of Gauntlet and see if you can sweet talk Sovereign? Yeah. That'll be Eldor's bag since that's his people. Okay. So you guys head back over to the guild house and uh, everybody is about their regular business and Savra is there. So... What did you want to say to try to, uh, you know, ask her or convince her or however you wanted to do it, Sako? Be honest, lie, whatever you want, but obviously just, you know, they might not like it if you lie, but you can do whatever you want. I think I'm just going to pretty much let them know that we're going to try and make their, their jobs a little easier. We're going to help them out with a little reconnaissance. And uh, if we could use a griffin uh, or two, that would be very, very helpful, and we'd appreciate it. And all the intel can go back to them okay so um so you tell her i'm guessing you've you know you're honest about what you already know and stuff and so you explain it to her how it could obviously benefit the entire city possibly and uh because you guys also do know for sure that there's other people looking for the stone people that are not as honest as you so keep it out of their hands and stuff like that you explain that to her. okay okay um but still can you roll a persuasion for me sako That would be a persuasion, right, G? Tell the truth? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if he was lying, it'd be deception. Otherwise, just persuasion or flat charisma check if proficiency wouldn't be added. <laughs> uh, yeah, not not too good of a role, but um, she says, yeah, I don't know. They're, I probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, you know what? Fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, but uh, you're just going to have to owe me a favor or something later because uh, I'm not really supposed to be doing this but only one though I definitely can't sneak two out of here so and you guys gotta have it back before too long um you're just staying in town right just needed to scout town yeah just gonna scout around town okay she says uh I, I can't give you guys too much time then I mean maybe two hours at the most and that pretty much starts right now 
So if you get, if you want one, uh, I'll introduce you to one of our one of our younger griffins and um, get you set up, put a saddle on it and everything. So All you're right. ready to head out now. Set it up, and then uh, I'm gonna kind of look over to Kasha and, and Rav, and we'll talk quietly. Not afraid of heights, are you, Eldor? Well, I'm thinking speed-wise. If we put one of you that's lighter onto it, it'll fly faster. Things will be a little bit better. Plus, whoever has very, very good uh, perception might be able to see this better. The majig, the the detector majig, it wasn't super heavy, right? Like Akasha could carry it and fly. Yeah, it's it's like a spear almost. Let me see the weight. I don't. It didn't look like it was too big from the picture and stuff. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty small. Handheld. Yeah. Okay. Well, Akasha's got the best eyes, so she's up there with the majig, and Eldor and I are running around down below, and she can point to something. You know, she sees it. Yeah, it's only one pound. All right. That work? That works. Um, I have some of that paper, right? Yeah, you guys have the paper bird. I think it had nine charges total. I yeah, think I, you think guys each took three charges. I think you guys each took three. Yeah, we all have three. So. Okay, and is it... So, let me double check. Uh, you go over and Sovra introduces you to uh, Gordon. He's one of the uh, younger griffins, but he's still definitely big enough to carry you. So when you go to see it, he's kind of a, a little resistant. Doesn't seem overly you know, angry or anything, but can you give me an animal handling check, please, honey? Also, while she's doing this, uh, could I use a cantrip on her uh, for guidance? Oh, well. Okay, and what does that do? Um, it uh, adds a number roll to an ability check of her choice, so that way uh, it kind of boosts the next ability. Okay. Okay, what did you say the griffin's name was? Gordy. Gordy? One... Yeah, Gordon. Gordy. Gordon, so, um... Lightwing. So go ahead and... I guess if you if you click the effect, it's probably going to roll that, right, Sago? And if not, roll a d4. And we'll add that to the uh, well, it's gosh. actually it's something that would roll when she makes the check. So yeah. if it if it's on your is it already on your sheet, Sako? Uh, I see it. Yeah, it's here. I don't what know is how the to click do the it. magnifying glass? What does it say underneath? Uh, effect guidance check one d four roll one minute, and then underneath it says effect guidance self one minute. Okay, the one that doesn't say self, drag that and drop it on Akasha in the combat tracker. Actually, before you do that, Ben hit the hit a long rest on the combat tracker. Because okay. this, this is the following day, so. Yes. Just to clear the initiative order. Busy. and There you go. And then, uh, Becky, that uh, you can remove that Hunter's Mark too. But Sako, if you drop that effect, the one that does not say self, if you drop it on her in the combat tracker, it'll work. There you go. And that there right go. there means the next time she rolls a check, it'll automatically roll an extra d4 and add it to it. Just in case so you see something up there. Yeah, perfect. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, either way, I, that uh, roll was good enough, baby. Got a 14. So uh, Gordon seems to be calm enough with you. So when you go ahead and you know you saw her put the saddle on there, and you, you stick your hand out, and he kind of uses his beak to kind of sniff your hand a little bit, and looks at you, and then look kind of just looks to, you know to the side, carrying on with looking at what he was doing. So he doesn't seem overly concerned. So if you want to, you can go ahead and hop on. All right, let's get the show on the road. Well, guidance is still there, so she could use it for her perception, her spot check. Perfect. Okay, so you guys get up and start flying around. Um, are you going to have Ghost stay at the bar, or are you going to have him tag along with uh, Eldor and Roth? I'll have him tag along with him. Okay, so you just tell him to follow the guys? Mm-hmm. Tell him to be good, not cause trouble. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make sure he eats some right. orphans. <laughs> so you're flying around, and uh, it doesn't take you too long, but you, it's probably been like a good hour or so. You've only got two, so you're starting to get a little bit worried. You're thinking it might not work, but you know there's still a little bit of time. Uh, but then you go flying over... Your, yeah, there it is. You go flying over the trades ward. Uh, when you're flying over the trades ward, you get a, a ping from the... Um, Detector. Number right detector. So, 
Do I just roll a perception check to see if I can figure out exactly where it's coming from, or? Yeah, because you because you heard it ping, so you know it's got to be it's 500 feet, right? I, I believe is what it was. Yeah. So you know he's within 500 feet of you. So go ahead and do a perception check, and you'll have a little bit of advantage to look on down below you and see if you can see without having to get lower or anything. Cool, that was a nice little. Nice little add on there. Uh, and yeah, with that, you look and see uh, you are flying through, and you look and see down an alley. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a. It looks like a, a blanket or a cloak or something thrown up over this thing. It's. It looks like a person sitting down with their on on their ass with their back up against a wall with their knees up and their hands around their knees kind of thing. Uh, and then it looks like either a blanket or a cloak or something over it. But since you've got a you know a good perception, when you look, uh, you, you, the, doesn't look like it's skin. You know, it looks like it's uh, made out of some kind of metal or something like that. Whatever that bum down there is, looks like it's a uh, not a human at least. So, and it's just sitting there up against a wall with its head down, kind of half. You do well. You assume asleep, but those things don't sleep. You assume. So sitting in an alley. All right, then I'm gonna go like two buildings over and land the Griffin, and then send out a note to Eldor and Rob. Let them know where I am, and that I found him. Okay, and so you say that you're on the corner of Blank and Blank Street in the Trades Ward, and you write that down, and then you you when you're done writing it down, you pick it up and throw it in the air, and it the paper kind of comes to life and origamis itself into the shape of a bird and starts flying off so and then we will i guess just call it there because the next part would definitely take too long so sounds good yeah then eldor and i of course as soon as we get it we'll we'll run over there with ghost and then yeah we can pick up there next week for um you know when we catch up with with akasha we won't go straight to the nimble right but to akasha instead Okay, so you're still a couple buildings away. You're still sitting on the Griffin up there. You didn't get down and go down the buildings to the street level or anything, right, babe? You're still just sitting up there? Yeah, no, I'm... Sent the note off and waiting? Yeah, I'm staying up there until either I see the Nimble Right walking off or I see them coming. Okay. Uh, and did you tell them exactly where you are, or did you just say the corner of here and here? Because they might not know the truck on the roof. So. Yeah, no, I would have told them exactly where I was and where okay. I saw the Nimble Right. So. All right, then we will say that you are uh, sitting there and they are on their way the three of them with ghost included so. sounds good so, sounds like another battle coming up soon 